The more she say yes. Hit that like button. Now we got 106 likes and 59 people in the building. If I don't know what happened. But I know. But I know, and I know. Yeah, hit that like button. Let's get them all, get them likes all the way up so we can see again. Get them likes up to a thousand, the past a thousand. Watch you see, we got more people in the building. Tell the people behind the scenes at YouTube, stop playing games with the numbers. We shouldn't have no no less than ten thousand people in the building tonight. We know the game is rigged. Tell the FBI behind, behind the scenes to stop playing with my numbers. My brother, Lord, I can. Let's play a little game, people. I want everybody in the building because as we started this live, we had more likes than people in the building. So let's do it again. So whoever behind the scene that's you at YouTube that's adjusting my numbers. They have to make the numbers go up more. Stop playing games and stop gradually holding people in the building because I guarantee you right now the numbers is all the way up. So y'all, what y'all do is y'all hit the like button now and let's get, see as soon as I say that now we jump up to 1500. Yeah, hit that like button, man. So they can stop playing these military mind games. Detroit is in the building.
going down for crimes against humanity. Oh, you could say that again. Oh, you could say that again. It's just funny though. It, it's, it's like, yo, everybody knew Diddy Little Secrets. Everybody was partying with Diddy. They knew Diddy Noodle Secrets. You heard Quilly, you look at the academics, you, you watch academics, you see Quilly, shout out to Quilly. You see him up there and he telling you that on certain days you couldn't party with Diddy. Some days you could, but on certain days you couldn't go to those parties. The truth been out there. See, the question is, is that all the people that knew the truth about Diddy and they knew all his dark secrets, they still was partying with Diddy. They still was cool with Diddy. But it is what it is. We got way more than 17, 18, 1800 people in the building. The more y'all hit that like button, the numbers is going to go up because they forced to show y'all like they don't want to get caught again. Because they watching right now. They they holding the numbers back. They don't want to get caught. The more y'all hit the like button, the more the numbers is going to go up. Because somebody behind the scenes, first of all, you got to understand something, right? Our platform, because this platform is nothing without y'all the people. We are a threat to them other platforms. That's why they sat down with us at the table a few times. And now they act like they don't know us over here. But when they left the table, all the numbers over here on this side is rigged. Now you see some of these platforms, they numbers is going up. They doing numbers. Act, act numbers was stupid today. 34, 35,000 on one channel, 7, 8,000 on another channel. But meanwhile, when you pay attention, a lot of the big YouTubers, black YouTubers, they going down. The numbers is going down like crazy. Shout out to the 2,100 people in the building. But I don't care what nobody say. I know we got more people than that in the building. Are you not entertained? Is this not why you're here? Diddy about to get his snot box rocked. That judge gonna get that hammer and hit him in the, hit him in the, hit him in the head with the headshot. Diddy is done. When the FBI comes, whoop, whoop, that's the sound of the police. Whoop, whoop, that's the sound. When the FBI come, Bad boy, bad boy, what you gonna do? Did he? Did he gonna be in the bullpens? He gonna be in the showers of San Quentin in Attica, dropping the soap on purpose. Nigga behind him gonna be sitting up there talking about take that, take that, take that. <laughs> Bad boy. <laughs> ah, man. Let me tell you something, man. There's a lot of rumors out there. But to see his children, his sons at one house, daughters at another in the grass being detained is despicable. To see his children, to me, that's not funny. Because they was raised by evil. And with all the allegations that's on the internet, when some of those allegations start to come up in the courtrooms and in those documents and those beautiful daughters that he have, those twins, they got to listen to the nightmares on Diddy Street. One, two, Diddy's coming for you. And they got to hear rumors of what Diddy allegedly had done to their mother? Three, four, better lock your door. Ooh, we. It ain't looking too good for Diddy. Yeah, Big is rolling over in his grave. Yeah, he rolling over in his grave. Because the reality of it is, when you sit back and you analyze Biggie, in his first video, the writing was all over the wall. I told y'all, Diddy first video, you know, man, you, you look at in the video, all you see is him sitting up there dancing with trannies. And then the scene with him in the bed, that's a tranny. It's written all over your face. There's not an amount of money in the world 
that you could pay me to get in the bed with a transgender. There's not enough money in the world that you can pay me. And I know, I know, I know. Ben thighed you, I know. I know he took advantage of a little boy. I know he thighed the little boy. But what y'all didn't understand, the message that I was coming with, same script, different cast. Africa Ben Bada, Diddy, Russell Simmons, Y'all don't even understand the evil that comes with the industry. The thing about it is that I don't understand, like, I'm, I'm kind of confused. I'm, 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 I'm going to be honest with y'all, right? Because it's like, okay, you watch the TV show, How to Catch a Predator, right? You always want to catch a predator. Ain't no if, ands, and buts about it. You always want to stop a predator. But I'm not going to sit up there and lie. And act like I'm not feeling some type of way because Diddy wouldn't be going down if he wasn't beefing with those with the with, with the bill with the with the elite. If he wasn't beefing with the slave master, he wouldn't be going down. They was okay with a house negro violating the field negroes. They was okay with a house negro violating the field negroes. Just as long as he didn't bite the hand that fed them. And when Diddy bit the hands that was feeding him, now you're watching him being taken down. But the reality of it is when you sit back and you analyze all of this, it's like, wow. They will build you up just to break you back down. They will build you up and break you right back down with humili humiliation rituals. What you see is a ritual, but what you need to be paying attention to, we're going to get to that. Oh, we're going to definitely get to that. What we really should be paying attention to, because there's a, really, there's a reason why, at this specific time, Diddy is going through his humiliation ritual. Now, whether they're going to allow him to make a comeback and forgive him for the evils that he done, when he went against his master, I don't know. I mean, at the end of the day, Bill Cosby went through a humiliation ritual and they destroyed Cosby. And the truth of the matter is, Cosby really ain't do nothing. That shit that they was getting Cosby for, Cosby was just having sex and getting high. Having sex and getting high. And I'm not going to say he innocent, but damn, the nigga going out for things that he did 35 and 40 years ago. To grown woman, with grown woman, and when he decided to go against the elite, they got the same formula, the same recipe. They're going to deal with you with the same ass whooping. And the reality of it is, when this industry is done, shout out to the 3,200 people in the building in 13 minutes. When they done, would you? Ain't no black man in that industry going to be left standing, looking clean. Because in order for you to rise in Satan's house, on Satan's dance floor, in Satan's mansion, and you got a seat at the dinner table sitting with Satan, you have to be filthy. This is why I always told y'all, it is easier for the camel to get through the eye of the needle than it is for a rich man to get into paradise. Because it comes with a price. Chris, the entire music industry and government needed to be investigated top to the bottom, 24 hour surveillance, so they can't leave the country. Thank you for sponsoring this war. Y'all better understand something, right? And so, yo, I got to take my time with this live. Ain't no rush. Don't rush, baby. The loving ain't going nowhere. Slow it down. <laughs> if it wasn't for Diddy, we wouldn't have no Mary J. Blige. Is this the end? It's over, Diddy. When the FBI come for you, you're done. You were done.
Oh, I ain't gonna rush. I ain't gonna be the two minute man tonight. We ain't gonna be the two minute man tonight. I'm just bad. I, you know, I'm fasting for the month of Ramadan. I really wish I could take a swig of some alcohol and really, really go in. I said, the hand he's calling me. It's the water right here. I've been fasting all day. I just broke my fast. Had me some chicken and potatoes. And now, <laughs> we about to have some P. Diddy at this table. <laughs> No, we don't drink no Ciroc over here. You can throw that Ciroc right in the garbage. We ain't doing Ciroc over here. Did he go flip on who? Who did he go flip on? Himself? Do y'all understand? We didn't even get into the, the rumors, the allegations. Do y'all understand that Diddy is being investigated for sending a million dollars in the Tupac hit? Do y'all understand that Diddy is being investigated for the death of Biggie and Pac? Do y'all understand that, Drag? What up, Drag? Thank you for sponsoring this war. We up in the building. We going in tonight. Do y'all understand the allegations? Yeah, Ben Bada should be next. Let me see. Let me see something real quick. I hope y'all can hear this because I don't have my speaker. But I really, really want y'all. See, sometimes before I before, let me let me let me. Sometimes, right, y'all don't understand when I flip on people, it's because I see these glasses right here. These are the magic glasses. When I take these magic glasses and I put them on, I can see some of the shit that y'all don't see. I can see through bullshit. I can see through full of shit people. I can see through manipulators. I can see through these dudes. I see through people. Get the point. I see through people. And from the beginning, when my son was out there looking like he was being heroic, standing in front of the police, being paid to be a paid activist, I was sitting back and analyzing through his bullshit. I was watching. And let's get to the tell of the tape. I hope y'all can hear this. Listen, man, if, if it's one thing that I've learned from Diddy and this whole situation is that people don't love you. They love what you represent. They love what you can provide. They love their interests. If you benefit that, but they don't give a fuck about you because the minute you fall, they went to quiet. One minute you can be the biggest thing in the world and the next minute you can be the butt of everybody's jokes. The people that said they love you, people that was with you, just understand that. Just understand that tomorrow they won't fuck with you. Today you could be the man, you could be at the top, and tomorrow everybody will turn against you. So don't live for the praises, don't live for the claps, don't live for the awards and rewards, live for you. Go to sleep every night knowing that you can sleep good because your moral compass is good because you live for you. Because all the rest of that shit is superficial and it, it, it's fleeting. Your best friend will be your enemy tomorrow. The person who loved you will try to kill you tomorrow. Just understand that. In this life, there's no permanent friends and lovers or anything. It's only permanent interests. If your interests don't align with somebody else's, if you don't benefit them no more, they don't give a fuck. When they, once they start praising you and they start clapping for you and shit get dim, it's only you. It's only you, King. Pay attention. The minister said, don't laugh, learn. The minister said, who are you talking about, Minister Farrakhan? The same one that ordered a hit, allegedly, on Malcolm X? Because Malcolm X exposed Elijah Muhammad for running around with little girls? Is that the minister that you're talking about? 
Is that the minister that you quoting? Meanwhile, the same allegations in the case that we're dealing with right now, these allegations, we're dealing with allegations of P. Diddy doing some of the most heinous crimes, males and females. The things that he's being accused of, there's a line that righteous people don't cross. And it gets to a point to where that when you find somebody is innocent, you stand next to them. When somebody is innocent, you hold them down no matter what. But when you got a dude that already paid $30 million to hush a female that had allegations, phones of the man's dead ex-wife, his baby mother, phones with evidence in it, all types of stuff that she turned over to the FBI. And see, the thing about it is she might not have turned it over. or Maybe she did. Who knows? When she settled with P. Diddy, what P. Diddy probably didn't understand or he understood, that's why he's been so quiet, is that no matter what paperwork you signed in a lawsuit, when it comes to a criminal investigation, that goes out the window. She can legally sit down with the feds and testify to the crimes that she knew P. Diddy did. Some of the things that P. Diddy is accused of, my son, sometimes you got to know when to shut up, my nigga. You really, really got to know when to shut up. There's a time to be quiet and is there time to talk. The problem is it's so much shit that you're supposed to be talking about because you and your Black Lives Matter until freedom movement, which I did, y'all helped to put these people in position and power in our country that got this country sinking. You won't speak on that. You won't admit to the evil doors like how Martin Luther King told us that he led us into a burning house. You won't admit that you burned us into a burning house because you know that you were paid activists. Listen to what you're saying. Turn that TV down. Listen, man, if, if it's one thing that I've learned from Diddy in this whole situation is that people don't love you. They love what you represent. They love what you can provide. They love their interests. If you benefit that, but they don't give Let me stop you right there. So this dude right here that's speaking up on behalf of Diddy, Mr. Take That, Take That. What you doing is right now is you defending the man that took kids that wanted to be part of making the band and made them walk all the way to West Bubblefuck to go get him a cheesecake. And then when they went and got the cheesecake, they brought it back to where he was at, told some of them that he could eat the cake, the cake out of the ass, allegedly. My son, that's what you defended? You defending a person that created a door, a door, and in order for you to be successful and get through that door, you had to sit down on drink champs? John, turn that TV down. My TV yes, it is. P. Diddy pushing up on. Fabulous on drink champs. P. Diddy pushing up on fabulous on drink champs. Mr. Lee, bro. yeah, I love this drink. Where you champs. Put my bag I like when you like this, Daddy. Yeah, where you put my bag Daddy, daddy I like when you oh, when scrambling right here, right here. and scraping for no, shit. No, 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 I, got I no like shit. that. You know, I'll be practicing. I got yeah. no. My son, do you see the look? Do you see the look on Fab's face? Do you see the look on Fab's face? Are you looking? Do you know what it feels like to be a man? A man. And you got another man humiliating you 
in front of millions of people on TV, TV telling the world that he want to party with you, aka have sex with you. Because you know how we party at our parties. But Diddy, I partied with you. No, I really want to party with you, Fab. Do you know what it's like to feel to, to be a man? Fab knew that if he reacted the way that he wanted to react it, towards Diddy, if Jada Kiss would have reacted the way that they wanted to react, he was embarrassing them. That, that Puff had the part of the power to destroy their careers with the snap of a finger. And that's what you are, this is what you defending, my son? AQG, remember the last 10 days of Ramadan is valuable. Time of prayer and good deeds. This life ain't worth nothing compared to paradise. It's upon the law. Absolutely right. Peace, highs, keep it up. Good work. Apple, Apple. Thank you for sponsoring this war. Appreciate you. Yo, do y'all see Kiss face? Are y'all seeing what I, are you looking at Kiss face? You see how he's squinging up? Are you are you seeing how he's squinging up? Now just imagine, first of all, you could tell allegedly that Diddy's high. He's high. He can't even control himself with the cameras rolling. He's he, he's in the mood. He want that sexual healing. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Let's make love tonight. <laughs> but oh, <laughs> eyes, eyes, brother. Oh, eyes, 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 uh, eyes, eyes. I understand. I understand. Look at fat face. Yo, okay. So check this out. It's me, Tyrese. Ray J and F. Gary Gray. You know, I'm a type of nigga, I like variety, man. I like people that's unpredictable. Uh -huh. I, you know what I'm saying? I like different personalities. So I was like, I never knew they would become what they are today. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but like, you know. Do y'all see the discomfort in Fab's face? Do y'all see the discomfort in his face? Take the what and leave the what? Take the nut and leave the balls? Wow. No diddy. Niggas created a slogan. It's called no diddy. Niggas created a slogan called no diddy. The new way of saying no homo. My son, that's what you defended? What? Night. That sounded like the type of night I want to have in Vegas. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So top. So Tyrese. Kevin this told is a him, fight. This is a Floyd fight, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Tyrese keep on talking about like how you got to get back to church. And we just like, yo, the night ain't start. You got to get back for church. We in motherfucking <laughs> Vegas, nigga. We're like, you can go to church next week. You know what I'm saying? Send in, send in your thing. You know what I'm saying? Ain't never we in Vegas. Don't be bringing God into this situation. Don't bring God, God into this situation. You know what I'm saying? Don't bring God into that situation? We in Vegas. You don't bring God into Satan's house, my nigga. Nah, you don't bring God into the... Come on, y'all know how God felt about Sodom and Gomorrah? Puff telling them. Y'all know how God felt about Sodom and Gomorrah? You don't bring... You don't bring God into Sin City? 
You don't bring God into Satan's house. We ain't going to Vegas to be nice. We going to Vegas to be nasty. We talking about doo-doo on your balls, doo-doo on your sheets, doo-doo on your belly. Chocolate who you, you who. We don't say pause. We say no diddy. <laughs> I'm laughing, but it ain't funny. I'm laughing, but it's not funny. Shout out to the 5,000 people in the building. Make sure y'all hit that like build, that, that like button. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> then you got um, Ray J. So Ray J is like just really like feeling like Ray J right now. You know what I'm saying? Y'all gonna act like y'all ain't see the dread run? He did the pure on. He was running around the table and did he chase them? They're gonna grab his hand and pull him back. Nah, get over here. And these grown men had to tolerate that. They had to tolerate that. Because if you offend Diddy, Diddy got the powers to be behind him. But when Diddy got when, when, when his head got too big and he started arguing with Master, 48 laws of power, my nigga never never outshined the master. See, your broke friends on the corner, that's not the master. But the one who cuts the check, you don't never outshine the master. You don't never burn a bridge unless you don't never plan on crossing that bridge again. And you never, ever, 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 ever bite the hand that feeds you. And I'm reading the super chats tonight. Sharif, on the same date, Mar Mar March 25th, 1997, Biggie released Life After Death. This is poetic justice. Oh, word? Ooh. Mmm. Is Biggie getting revenge from the grave? There's a lot going on on social media. There's a lot. Yeah. Water splash. Water splashed in my face. No diddy. No diddy. The water splashed in my face. Y'all saw that. I couldn't see for a second. No diddy. Miguel C. Thank you for sponsoring this war. Then he put the horn in his mouth and blew. <laughs> the black Epstein. The black Weinstein. Chocolate, you who was crazy, yeah, it's crazy. What you think you gonna get? news right now we're following the department of homeland security conducting a raid at a house in homeby field hills believed to be connected to sean combs the rapper and music executive perhaps being linked to a sex trafficking investigation he got some shots of a few people coming out of the home those people have been detained now we're trying to still connect the dots we do have some sources on scene here that we're getting this information from we were actually the first ones here with about 30 different law enforcement vehicles at least there are three bearcats on scene here this just all unfolded sandra i would say 
less than 10 minutes ago. We got here even before the crime scene tape came up. So uh, we're just down the hill. If you look up the street where Tony is right now to the right, you'll see one of those bearcats and law enforcement. On the other side of those bushes, basically, is that home that is registered to Bad Boy Films, which is part of Bad Boy Entertainment. And the home in particular is registered not only to Bad Boy Films, but to one of P. Diddy's daughters. They are heavily armed and uh, they've been very tactful would probably be the best word to use as they uh, made entry into this home uh, this afternoon. We actually watched them as they made through their made their way through one of these uh, side gates. And as soon as they got inside the home, one of the things that first things they did was made their way into this garage that you see is open right there. Now they did take a couple people into custody. We witnessed that. Now are they under arrest? Or are they just being uh, asked about what they know? That I can't answer. But I can tell you, there's three people right there that were taken into custody. Were, were inside that home at the time of the raid. We did see a bunch of investigators going in, making the raid in there, and clearing that as well. So they're going to do a thorough search as they conduct this raid. And so far, Stu, from what I understand and from Haley on the ground there, they have not seen, and we have not seen from our vantage point, any sign of Sean Combs, the 54-year-old who is believed to be the property owner of this. Breaking news right now, we're following the Department of Homeland Security conducting a raid. At Hold up. There's no signs of P. Diddy. So y'all heard that part right there. He's not in custody. He's not sitting down being um, interrogated by the police. His children is being held on his lawn in handcuffs, detained outside of the house. And these are the allegations that he's being, I'm a father. I know what it's like to be on a run. I've been on a run before. But to have your children being pulled out of their beds, out of their house, news cameras on top of them, and these are the allegations? This is coming from the news, not me. Breaking news right now, we're following the Department of Homeland Security conducting a raid at a house in Holmby Field Hills, believed to be connected to Sean Combs, the rapper and music executive, perhaps being linked to a sex trafficking investigation. You got some shot. Investigated for a sex trafficking investigation. See, it's that part right there. If I got to explain to my kids, you know what I mean, daddy on the run, niggas tried to run down on me in Bronx River and I had to rock somebody's snot box. If I had to explain that or retaliating because I got shot outside and I found out who shot me and now I had to move and now they're investigating me for a homicide and I'm on the run. If I got to explain that to my kids, I'm cool with that. But how do you explain to your children that you want to run? That they are being humiliated? That the police is searching in their bedrooms, searching in their computers? Searching in their cell phones, searching in all of their devices in the house, and they are looking for things to link their brothers, their brothers. You got the twin sisters watching the police antagonize and investigate their brothers because the brothers allegedly be bringing young girls to the house so that he could party. The brothers is bringing young females to the house so that he can party. So now you jeopardize them young boys' life because you like little girls. And see the difference between the FBI and the black community? See the white people? When you break their laws and you think that you're going to sleep with little boys and little girls, you're going to get locked up. They're not going to make up slogans talking about, you fight me. They're going to say, we got you. You're going to jail. And that's it. Thank the white man. Thank the FBI for being better than black people. I thank white people for being better than black people. Because if it was up to us to save our own people, we think it's funny. The things that used to happen to us during the days of slavery, now we think it's funny 
When we pick up the ways of the colonizer and we do that to each other, now we think it's funny and we laugh at each other's pain. Meanwhile, all over the news, see, all over the news with the colonizer? Shots of a few people coming out of the home. Those people have been detained. Now, we're trying to still connect the dots. We do have some sort those people been detained. They trying to connect the dots. Those are the reward. The, that, that's the reward of white justice right now. When it comes to black predators, when it comes to predators in the black community, we got to look for a white superhero because black people fell in love with victimizing each other. We even crack jokes like. He fired me and think that it's funny that a grown man who was the beginning of hip hop, who was the first gatekeeper of hip hop, he started this tradition of thying children. He started this tradition. So now the white man is looking like Superman to the black community and all the black people that was hurt by this black man that used his power to destroy. He used his power to be a predator. You know what it feels like to have the breath of the unwanted on you. And if you tell this man, no, that's the end of your career. Some niggas think this shit is funny. I'm gonna throw some laughs and some jokes, but it ain't really funny. We gonna laugh and joke. We might crack a smell, but ain't a damn thing funny. So now back to you, Bubble Lips. Because we gotta, I'm just trying to understand now. The news is telling the world that this man is on the run for allegations of doing some of the, the Epstein, this nigga's the Epstein. He's the black Epstein. He left his kids, he left Biggie, he left, he left in that car, right. Listen, man, if, if it's one thing that I learned from Diddy and this whole situation is that people don't love you. They love what you represent. They love what you can provide. They love their interests. If you My son. Diddy made Cassie. Cassie's one of the prettiest girls that walked this earth. She's a beautiful young lady. Instead of him taking Cassie and putting her on Beyonce's level because she could sing and she's pretty. He used that young girl that he had no business being with. She was a baby to that old ass man. And he used that young girl to get online and get some of the biggest beef sausages, grande, big, to stretch her wolves out and filmed her. And this is what he, yo. And he's talking about niggas is not being loyal to that. So that's what you loyal to, to my son. Mice, that's what you loyal to. That's what you took an oath to. Listen, man, if, if it's one thing that I learned from Diddy and this whole situation is that people don't love you. They love what you represent. They love what you can provide. They love their interests. If you benefit that, but they don't give a fuck about you because the minute you fall, they went to quiet. One minute you can be the big. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep stopping them. So mice, you gonna act like you didn't see what Diddy did to Craig Mac? Did y'all see the images of Craig Mack before he? Images of Craig Mack sick.
Did y'all see? This is the curse of bad boy. This is the curse of bad boy. Did you see what Diddy did to Craig Mac? Images of Black Rob, sick. What you might saw, you don't see the curse of bad boy? The nigga ain't have money for his hospital bills. This nigga had New York rocking in the 90s. I remember standing in the front of the building at Bronx River 1420, waiting for Big F to pull up in the truck because he had the mean system. And when he pulled up playing Black Rob, all you heard was boom, 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 whoa. We robbing, we kicking like whoa, like cho, like whoa, like whoa, like whoa. This is the things he did. Mice, what you talking about? Instead of him getting G Depp some help, G Depp turned himself in. He was mentally, he, he was haunted by bad boy. He turned himself, his life was so bad after signing with Puff, he turned himself in for a murder that they didn't even know he did. Look at the curse of Diddy. Look at the curse of Diddy. Biggest thing in the world, the next minute. Listen, man, if, if it's one thing that I've learned from Diddy, and this whole situation is that people don't love you. They love what you represent. They love what you can provide. They love their interests. If you benefit that, but they don't give a fuck about you because the minute you fall, they went to choir. One minute you could be the biggest thing in the world and the next minute you could be the butt of everybody's jokes. The people that said they love you, people that was with you, just understand that. Just understand that tomorrow they won't fuck with you. Today you could be the man, you could be at the top, and tomorrow everybody will turn against you. So don't live for the praises, don't live for the claps, don't live for the awards and rewards, live for you. Go to sleep every night knowing that you can sleep good because your moral compass is good because you live for you. Because all the rest of that shit is superficial and it, it, it's fleeting. Your best friend will be your enemy tomorrow. The person who loved you will try to kill you tomorrow. Just understand that. In this life, there's no permanent friends and lovers or anything. It's only permanent interests. If your interests don't align with somebody else's, if you don't benefit them no more, they don't give a fuck. When they, once they start praising you and they start clapping for you and shit get dim, it's only you. It's only you, King. Pay attention. The minister said, don't laugh, learn. This nigga really tried to get on when the locks left Diddy back in the days and they made their new album, they had a skit on the album called Raping You Records. You be raping, you raping, you raping you. The crazy part about it is when you listen to Raping You Records, right? And you listen to that table, we'll be raping you, raping you, raping you. Ra keep in mind, Raping you records was the locks. It's like they had a slogan that had two. It was a devil's. It was two meanings. It was two meanings to that. Yo, y'all gotta. Yeah, I don't think y'all really understand. Listen again. We talking about raping you records. Did he hanging out with Clive Davis on another island? <laughs> of Homeland Security conducting a raid at a house in Holmby Field Hills, believed to be connected to Sean Combs, the rapper and music executive, perhaps being linked to a sex trafficking investigation. He got some shots at us. Is that why the locks named it Raping You Records? Because all over the news, who would think 20 years later, Diddy would be on a run, his kids would be outside, and 20 years ago, Jada Kiss tried to indirectly tell us that the, the label, instead of it being bad boy, it was raping you records. 
Are you not entertained? Is this not why you're here? Mice, that's what you're defending? Haas keep exposing this poison industry. Fruitcakes, as rappers, jersey in the building. Thank you, Eric Kirkland. Thank you for sponsoring this war. I'm definitely reading the super chat tonight. Shout out to the 6,300 people in the building. Y'all make sure y'all hit that like button, though. Let's get it all the way up to 6,300 so we can really see how many people in the building. Haas, that's deep. Yeah, that's deep. Think about it. They been knew this about this man. That's why, yo, sooner or later, y'all gonna give me my props. Sooner or later, y'all gonna have to give me my props. Sooner or later, I've been doing this for seven years. Oh, he clout chasing. No, I seen the evils. Y'all was entertained by evil. Your children is being raised by evil. They being fed by evil. They being birthed by evil. Evil was changing their diapers. Everybody in a position of power in this industry participates in evil. Y'all niggas don't be paying attention with, yo, it's so many levels to this shit. You gotta listen to these rappers when they be dissing each other. That's like when the game said about Lloyd Banks. The nigga said Lloyd Banks ain't gonna be in the music industry too long. He's going to leave 50 because he's gonna get tired of 50 humping on him. Y'all thought it was a joke. Y'all thought it was a joke. People been telling y'all, Wendy Williams was telling y'all this 30 years ago. Niggas like Hassan Campbell is the Wendy Williams of this shit. Thank you. I'll accept that because you know what? Wendy Williams told y'all about this 30 years ago. Y'all thought it was a lie. Y'all thought she was just lying on y'all favorite celebrities. And y'all made these celebrities your god. Because they could perform, because they could sing, because they could dance. So you worship these celebrities. You worship them. Y'all don't even understand the Jedi mind tricks of slavery. You got the filled niggas suffering, poor, eating pig, eating pig intestines. You sitting up there cutting open the pigs. They threw you the intestines. So now what you had to do, you had to squeeze all the doo, doo out of the pig intestines. Then you had to go find some herbs. You had to wash the inside and the outsides of pig intestines. Then you took the pig doodle -doo hole, put it in the pot, put some seasoning in it, right? I'm about to cook for you. You had to put some seasoning in it. You cooking the, the, the pig's intestines. You put some black pepper, some hot sauce. This is how we got high blood pressure because this is how you had to eat. So now you cooking the pig's doodle -doo whole, the intestines, for six hours so that it could taste good. You had to make some of the evilest shit on the plantation taste good. Meanwhile, the house Negro dressing in master's clothes, eating fruits off a of master's table, taking baths, with master's good water. So now you want to be just like master. That's why all of y'all worship in this evil ass industry. The movie Emperor. Paying, paying, paying it forward. Keep spitting that truth. Thank you, family. Thank you for sponsoring this war. Left his kids like the true dickhead he is. The nigga left his kids on the battlefield to face the FBI. Ramadan Kareem says, left his kids on the battlefield. He left them on the battlefield. 
Shout out to the 7,100 people in the building. Let me screenshot that. Everybody put 7,100 in the, in the comment section. Everybody put 7,100 in the comment section. Because when this live goes off, I want y'all to look and see what they gave me credit for and how many numbers we really, really have. I know the haters is looking. I, I, I said highs fell off, right? All it takes is a dope topic to bring a nigga back. People want to hear my opinion. They want to see what I feel about certain situations. Which y'all keep sleeping on me. Highs ain't going to never die down, huh? What we calling this a platinum hit? Now we got a whole arena sitting up in the building. Huh? We got a whole arena. Now watch them pull the numbers back down to six. <laughs> Now hit that like button. Y'all gotta, gotta understand, son. They got hackers on my page to keep my numbers low. If y'all keep hitting that like button, I guarantee y'all, if y'all hit the like button and y'all get the likes up to 7,000, I promise you, we probably, nine times out of 10, we probably have like 15,000 people in the building. Stop playing. Oh, oh yo, Hocus, I should have, yo, Hocus, I should have did a call in. I started to call you earlier. I started to call you earlier. I swear to God, I gotta see. I gotta see if I got Hocus number in this phone right here. I gotta see if I got Hocus number in this phone right here, cause there's a lot that Hocus could teach you about some of the shitty shit that P Diddy did. We gotta see if y'all can hear Hocus. I hope Hocus pick up, boy. Yeah. I'm from Castle Hill. I'm from Soundview. We live right now, nigga. The... Yeah. Y'all can hear Hocus? Yo, so Hocus, yo, I know there's a lot that you know about Diddy that I don't even know, like how he was stealing people catalogs and blackballing people in the industry. You got to tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I'm 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 gonna, I'm gonna talk about one specific person, Kirk Burroughs. Kirk Burroughs. So what a lot of people don't know is that see, yo, guys, these these celebrities they get big and they get a lot of money. So people, oh, Diddy's a great businessman. He's a great business. No, he's not. Kirk Burroughs was the businessman. Kirk Burroughs is the actual guy who went down and got the LLC created for Bad Boy. They was partners. You know, obviously, like Diddy do everybody else. Diddy fucked them over. Um, used the feds. Kirk Burrow ended up with a federal case somehow, and you know, used his his high power lawyers to get Kirk off of Bad Boy. And Kirk been fighting ever since. You know, like he he did a lot. Kirk was behind Sean John. Kirk did a lot for Dr. Dre, Mary J. Blige. I'm talking about all of them, and that's a name that y'all get familiar with because he about to tell the story. This dude, this dude that did everybody dirty. All this. All this, yo, they hit, you know, Diddy, they hit, you know, they kick you when you down. Yeah, we need to kick him when he, when he down. Yeah, let him stay down. Take, how you say, take that, take that, take that nigga to jail. How about that? <laughs> take that nigga to jail. We ain't rocking with Diddy. No, not, how, yo, listen, man, he got too many out accusations of sexually assaulting men and women. Men and women. If that's anybody else outside of the billion dollar status, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God, we're gonna have a field day with him. Why are some people still defending him? He, we literally seen this guy. Well, you know, we know he's gay, right? But we seen him hit on grown ass men in podcasts. I'm not gonna say other people's name. And like, he's a predator. He, Diddy is a predator, and we all know it. But we gotta be quiet because why? Because what? Well, hey, Diddy ain't never gonna do no, me no favor. He ain't doing you no favor. He ain't doing nobody no favors. What we gotta be quiet for? Jill, son, you, yo, y'all too loud, y'all talking too much. What? what you also, oh, y'all, y'all the type that protects the uncle that's touching everybody in the family because he got money. That's how I look at it, huh? That's what they do. They, they protecting the uncle who got, who got money, who's the molester in the family. That's Diddy. That that's man, uncle, yo, that, that man used his power. To push up on niggas that he know would have normally punched him dead in his face. Exactly. 
Exactly. What you mean we ain't party? What you mean we did party? Nah, nah, I want to party with you. Really party with you, daddy. Well, come on, man. <laughs> come on, man. That nigga Gene Dill said that nigga be going in the stores buying dildos like, damn. He's like, can I, he's like, can I shop in peace then? <laughs> <laughs> did he want to shop in peace? being a freak in the sheets but it's something wrong with utilizing your power to take advantage and, and you know have people do sex like when jaguar right came and said what he did with christopher to christopher williams people made fun of christopher oh the nigga gay the nigga the nigga he actually sucked his d so that mean he get, yo but he he that that there's something called sexual extortion it's actually a crime it's a real crime called sexual extortion go look it up you cannot do that hey you want this record deal or suck my dick for it? You oh, pardon me for cursing. You cannot do that. You can't. Do, that's sexual extort. That is a crime. And let's take the crime out of it, right? Because we can't just ah, oh, they commit crimes. No, it's, it's it's immoral. It's spiritually wrong. It's physically wrong. It's immoral. It's and no, he should have did that to Christopher. Even if Christopher Williams did do it, he still should have did that. That's wrong. This guy's a sexual predator, and you know it's about it's about time. Take that, take that nigga to jail. <laughs> take that, take that nigga to jail. Take that, take that, that nigga to jail. <laughs> Remix. <laughs> Yo, it's crazy because it's like when you sit back and analyze it, the only thing I don't like about the situation is the fact that black people waited for the powers to be, the elite, to flip on this nigga to turn their back on him. We should have been turned our back on that dirty, decrepit nigga. We should have been turned our back on him. Yo, you you know what, bro? You just said something and it struck the nerve because um, Styles P, my brother, shout out to Styles P. Like, you know, the locks, you know, um, they handled their business and they probably like, yo, whatever. They they passed it or whatever. They moved on with their life. But even back then, like, when he did, when he, the, the way he was doing bad business, with all his artists, and I just see how you just posted Craig Mack, you just showed Black Rob, like, look, y'all, this this guy drained souls. Like, he draining people's souls, literally. He's taking their sexual energy from them, he's taking their talent, their, their talent from them, he's draining them, and, and leaving them out to just, yo, yo, God bless Mace, man, salute the Mace. Mace survived, and Mace is still thriving. Thank, yeah, that's my guy, salute the Mace, shout out to Mace for fighting. Yo, and, know, yo, I ain't gonna lie though. Yo, I ain't gonna lie. Yo, shout out to Mace. You know what I mean? I had, I had the opportunity to meet Mace over a phone call or whatever the case may be. But yo, the nigga Cam said he went and he went to Diddy and Mace's house, and the nigga the nigga had dildos around the house, and he was asking Mace, "Yo, what's up with that?" Yo, I could imagine what Mace had to go through. That's why yo Mace couldn't tell because. There's probably contracts and videotapes that Diddy had on that man because ain't no telling what Diddy did to them young boys. But the reality of it is, there's more to that story about Mace leaving the industry that niggas don't understand and Mace is keeping it quiet because the reality of it is, when you start telling industry secrets, you'll never make another dollar again. And niggas got bills to pay. I can only imagine the nigga, the nigga... Uh, his bodyguard talking about he up in the bedroom with Ja Rule. So you don't want to go in there. You don't want to go in there. <laughs> yo, but when um when uh Mark Curry said yo the dude will open that like this how he reel you in you knock on the hotel room he open up the door butt naked then just sit down and talk to you like everything is okay like yo it's good Are you out yeah so what we doing today yo. But he's butt ass naked talking to you. And if you stay, he got you. It's like, oh, this nigga stood there while I was butt naked. Yeah, all right. I'm gonna try him now. You know, like, yo, that guy, that guy, man, I don't, yo, I don't know. That's crazy, man. <laughs> I don't know where he get that from, but yo, I, I really hope it ends. And I hope the whole like even um somebody else got exposed today. Yeah, I can't I can't think who was it? Um um, the industry is just getting, everybody's getting exposed now. Oh, no, not today. 
um, Dan Schneider. I don't know if you talked about that. He, or the Nickelodeon documentary. Everybody's getting exposed, and I love it. All these sexual predators, let's keep going. All of them. It's time to hit the top dogs, too. The top record label exists. All of them. We can't stop. It can't stop at Diddy. Because it's going to look like Diddy is a scapegoat, or Kelly was a scapegoat. You know? Yeah, so. Somebody said Diddy in Africa. <laughs> Yo, I, I, the thing that kills me is like I said, man, as a man, when you put the handcuffs on my kids and you got my kids outside on the lawn, that shit is an ugly feeling. But the flip side to that is some of the rumors, and I hope it ain't true because I ain't got nothing to, against Diddy's kids. They should not have to reap the, reap the evil reward of the feds because of their father. But one thing I realized from being down with the Zulu Nation, growing up in Bronx River, up under Africa Bambada, being a part of that community center in Bronx River, it's like there's a whole system that these people use. And sometimes the older Bambadas and the older P. Diddies will use children that you hang out with, your girlfriends and your friends that's your age. Remember, those kids are not the same age as Diddy. Mm -hmm. And Diddy has a thing for toddlers. Cassie was a little girl when he was playing with her. Exactly. And then how you go, how you how you go out with Lori Harvey after your son? Or maybe that was the play. All right, just bring her to me. You know, and um <laughs> she nigga said R. Kelly about to have some company. Wow. Diddy is Diddy is a never been bothered on steroids because of the money. Because he's a billionaire. Like they they're the same. Like yep. people will not that's the that's the thing, how people will not look at Diddy as a being bother because his money and that's what I that's what I grit my teeth. Like these niggas are so fake. Y'all fake. How y'all don't everybody know what's going on? Y'all don't say nothing. Y'all fake and it, and sometimes like yo, why why we why are we risking our life by by waking people up when they don't care? Sometimes I feel like that, bro, but then I'm like, nah, we gotta expose it. I've been on Diddy Hills for Wow, long. And I'm gonna say this, right? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say who. But a bad boy artist, and I know it's not Mace. That's my god salute. You know, Shout out to Mace. It's actually, it's actually a woman, but I'm not gonna say who. A bad boy artist called me while wow, all this was going on, and I was exposed and going hard. Called me and said, "Thank you, Hocus. Thank you, yo. This everything that that they're saying is true. More people want to come out, but they're afraid. This is not a nice guy. This is the devil." This guy get people taken out. This is what they saying. So they like they they thanking me like yo keep your foot on his neck. Every they said this bad boy artist said everything is true and more. It's worse than what people think. Just keep that in mind, yeah. Because what niggas gotta understand this is that when they say like when they say it's a door, there's really a door. And when I sat back and I analyzed, just looking at a little bit of academics with him sitting up there with um, them, them Philly cats, it made me mad because I'm like, yo, we got some of the hot young boys. Shout out to RIU. Shout out to Swelly and them. Some of the, the hottest young boys in the city of New York that's never, ever going to get an opportunity because those that is a, that's in position in the music industry, they're not going to let you surpass them. The, at most, what they do is they use you to be a part of the entourage when they go to clubs. They might even let you act like you're opening act for them if you're lucky. These niggas won't even share you on the Instagram like, yo, this nigga over here, he's over here dope. All these big platforms that I went on, I was sneaky with it. I brought niggas with me. I tried to be the 50 Cent. He came out with his whole crew. Like I, everywhere I go, I try to throw a nigga name out there, bring niggas with me to give them to give them the same exposure that I got. And I'm realizing that there's a door. And when you get through that door, a nigga that had to go through the humiliation rituals that Meek Mills had to go through ain't going to just take a Philly nigga and bring him to the top of the empire without going through that same door. They're not going to let you reap those, be those benefits and you ain't get humiliated the way he got humiliated. He ain't taking one for the team. That's why niggas be at, at the top of their careers and they don't have an artist to fall back on. Nigga, you supposed to have 20 hot boys that you got hot on for your Instagram alone. And if one of those niggas make it even independently, they could come back and put you on when you fall off because this industry only gives you 
15 minutes of fame. Facts. You sit back and you, you analyze Hocus. When I started, well, I've been doing what we've been doing as far as talking and trying to uplift our people and exposing certain things. But when I sat down with that evil ass gatekeeper and that dirty, decrepit rat, the industry niggas, I don't know if that was supposed to be my ritual to go through the door through them the same way you see um, Charleston White with Aiden Ross. I don't know if that was my opportunity, but they saw something in me that they knew wasn't going to exist in that evil ass industry. And ever since then, like, come on, Hocus, we like me doing lives. I was doing lives with 10 and 15,000 people in my lives. The most people I had on a live ever was 32,000 people watching me on a live. This is the first time I had 7,000 people on a live in a while. Mm -hmm. And right now we had 6,600 with Hocus in the building. Up from Cassie Bell, up from Salview. They said he's not going to play ball. So, you know, we got, so when, when, when academics told you that they was going to lower your numbers, he got the call. One man percent, he got the call. He was told. Like, look, oh, is he going to play ball act? Nah, he ain't going to. Uh, well, he got, all right. He knew, he knew. <laughs> he knew you wasn't playing ball. You wasn't going to walk, walk through the door. That that was the, let's bring him through the door. You know, let's let, let, let's see. And, you know, like you said, look at Charleston White. All his own, like, and all this he talk, he walked through that door. I don't care what nobody said. Nigga. He told the world that Aiden Ross tried to set him up with a transgender, flipped on Aiden Ross, now he back with Aiden Ross. Nigga, you got one time to try to set me up with a transgender. Ain't nothing else to talk about. Oh, so so all that tells me is that he he he, he took he he did it. There's no way is think about it. He actually hooked up with the transgender. You tried to set me and now you back with him? He had to. He had to hook up with it. I'm going on the way, I'm saying it right now live. Charleston White. Hooked up with a transgender, Aiden Ross. He, you know, he, he hooked up with him. He slept with him. Hocus for fifth said it. it wasn't Haas. It was me. Cause there's no way that he attempts to do that and then you go and you back with him. You had to take the walk through the door said, and say, fuck it. Stick it in my eye. <laughs> <laughs> Stick it in my eye. <laughs> Stick it in the good eye, too. <laughs> Like Diddy, man, Diddy. We, oh man, we got to come up with the Freddy Krueger song. One, two, Diddy's coming for you. <laughs> Somebody got to put that skit together. Do, 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 do. That nigga Diddy on the run. <laughs> the nigga Shug said, "If you don't want your executive all in the video." <laughs> Yo, you can tell who funded who, or who, who gave somebody some money at one point in time. Or uh, who I don't know been to the mansion by the way they take up for him. That's all I'ma say. <laughs> I ain't even gonna say no names. But if you, uh, you know, it's it's crazy out here, man. I don't I don't get it. Man, I say I names. Know. At the end of the day, I don't even understand my song. How the nigga acting like he got so much integrity, talking about soul not for sale. But you defending a nigga that paid thirty million dollars to keep his secrets a secret. When a nigga spent thirty million dollars. To keep his secrets a secret, you have to ask what kind of secrets do he have that cost $30 million? I, t I told her, you know, people defending that, like, oh, what's him? It was his companies that gave the money. Oh, I'm not, it, it ain't even the fact that he gave $30 million. He gave it the next day. The next day. Like, what the, yo, I, I can't stand y'all. I swear. What? He's, he gave it the next day. Now check it. Now the crazy part about it is, is that has anybody seen him since the police went to his houses? Have you seen well, him? I seen I seen the video. They were just posted. It was did there was Diddy walking like back and forth in a black car pull up. They saying that's the feds talking to him that he didn't leave. That could be an old video though. There's no, but it, it got TMZ logo on it though. It got the TMZ logo on it. Nah, so nigga, it's the way you said he walking back and forth. Take that, take yeah, that. He's like pacing back and forth. It looks like it, it looks like you know he's in trouble. Like damn, like 
like they raided in the crib and he was outside. So there's a lot going on. Um, the, you know, you know the, the, the rabbit hole about the star highs, and they 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 need to hear from me tonight. We coming back on YouTube though. Um, and after my B day, my B day the fourth, because I just got all equipment, everything. You know, I moved to the new house, so I'm I'm lit now. But um, we still over there. You know, until until I until I come back on YouTube, we'll be back after the fourth. And y'all make sure y'all if y'all if y'all been in clubhouse, y'all make sure y'all definitely support the rabbit hole because I'm part of the rabbit hole. That's the family right there. Y'all don't go support none of them other niggas inside that clubhouse app. The rest of them dudes is no good. No good. No bueno. <laughs> nah, I appreciate you though, bro. Just hit me up. We lit. We live. I'm about to go open the rabbit hole and, and, and entertain them about this ditty. So you know we about to go in. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> Hocus Fall Fifth. Shout out to Soundview. Shout out to Castle Hill. I appreciate the fact that you say what most people don't have the balls to say. Diddy should have got locked up years ago. Meek Mill's going to WrestleMania and The Rock showed up. Till Roy. <laughs> Roy's a distraction. Oh, Meek Mill's went on WrestleMania or was he wrestling with Puff? Did he really go on WrestleMania or was he wrestling with Puff? Bad boy. Like, we live in, yo, yeah, I don't think y'all understand. We living in some serious times right now. He knew it for years what he was doing with Cassie. See, the thing about it is, is that, which y'all got to understand about this industry, like with Cassie, for example, these niggas got to get permission Joel, turn that TV down. These niggas got to get permission. Even to be in relationships with certain people. You are controlled. In the industry, you're controlled. A lot of that shit that Kanye West is saying, y'all not really listening to what he's telling you is true. When Kanye West sold his soul and he got with Kim Kardashian, he requested that. They gifted him that hoe. He loved that hoe. And when he broke his contract, she was able to escape him. You got to understand something. A hoe don't want to be with one nigga. She was trapped with that nigga until he broke his oath. John, yeah. turn that down. Not, Nigga, it's in my, my whole audience. All right. It's John. We can hear it out here. Some dudes on XN, he got the audio and he played it for everyone. Look into that. You should have 100K numbers, but you are whacking your numbers show. You've been repeating the same BS for years. That's why your viewers went from 500 to 20 k Huh? You must be talking about somebody else. I know you ain't talking about me. Not me. Ooh, Scooby-Doo. Shout out to the 6,500 people in the building. Nah. That's the head of the snake are uh, getting arrested. Is it safe to say that the door is no longer exist? The hell yeah, the door exists. You got to understand something, man. The industry is another word for the plantation of entertainment. Entertainment was placed in your world to keep you distracted from looking for freedom. You know, like when you watch that movie Braveheart. And when you're watching the movie Braveheart, you see... Mel Gibson laying down and they telling him to ask for mercy as they have the axe getting ready to chop his head off. And his last words as they was torturing him, cut open his stomach, his last word, he screamed freedom. Niggas spend billions of dollars to keep you dumb. They spend billions of dollars to keep you stupid. And this is why you would never build another pyramid again, ever, ever. 
ever, ever got you believing that you was living in the Stone Age and the Dark Ages. No. You had an advanced civilization living in ways you, you, you lived in the means that you need to live in. And every time you start to get smart, they're going to erase your intelligence with giving you ignorance. The days of Rome, in the gladiator, in the arena, they gave you the gladiators, the clash of swords. I repeat the same shit over and over again because we still caught in the same spell. And every time somebody new sees me, it releases them from that spell. When you plant a seed and then you water that plant, that seed with water, it grows and it sprouts. In the hood, they plant the seeds of real niggas and bad, and bad bitches. Mm -hmm. And they watered that seed of evil and it spread it. In the hood, when they planted dope, crack, coke, and all those drugs, what it did was it spread it, hurt and pain and secrets. Because nobody want to tell that their mother was a crackhead and why their mother was smoking crack. There was niggas like Africa Bambada, a lower level version of P. Diddy now, but still not really that much. Lower in the money, but still he got millions. But he never left the hood. He stayed in the hood and he built the most powerful army in hip hop till today called the Zulu Nation that was filled. See, you got to understand the history and how these creeps move. Africa Bambada, when he started hip hop, hip hop was so powerful that all the gangs in New York City went from being whatever they was to one set, which was the Universal Zulu Nation. So now you got a predator that has million, millions of dollars that's living amongst crack babies. My father was a dope fiend. He wasn't there. My mother was damn near crippled. Raising six kids. So now when you have an industry, when niggas play that little part with me on Instagram, matter of fact, let me show you that little part real quick. Let me see something. Class is in session. I don't even remember the first time I went to Bam's house, but what I do remember is my mother be sending me to the store, and I was supposed to come right back from the store, and I would always end up at his house. I would take my time going to the store. I would have to, I would walk maybe, let's say, 250 feet to his building. And the store is past, you know, past his building, so I had to walk past his building to get to the store. And, you know, Bam House was the fun house. I really remember the first time. Everybody clipped that part instead of playing the whole documentary. Bam House was the fun house. It was the fun house. Diddy House was the fun house. Until he caught you in one of those traps? Everybody around the world dies to being bad boys. Shout out to the 7,200 people in the building. Y'all hit the like button so we can keep those people in the building because y'all already know they're going to pull the numbers right back down. And then some of y'all take that clip, that same clip that I just played, and y'all playing that clip trying to embarrass me what I'm trying to bring awareness to a predator. I'm not saying what he did to me was fun. I'm saying being around the same. Some of y'all right now are begging and dying for P. Diddy to just, just acknowledge your Instagram. To just acknowledge it. Y'all can't wait to meet P. P Diddy because you feel like he's going to be the answer to your dreams. Some of these rappers, some of you rappers watching me right now would die to be on Drink Champs with P. Diddy talking to you the same exact way. Not me. I turned this into a lifestyle. 
of me using my voice against these niggas before the colonizer, before white media, before the elite decide that this nigga bit the hand that feed it, fed him. I've been doing this for seven years. Then other niggas watched me do this and it became a hustle for them. But we ain't gonna get into that. We gonna stick to where we at. Y'all make sure y'all hit the like button, man. They already start pulling the numbers right, right back down. Y'all see the game. How we go from 7,200 to 6,400. Dennis, thank you. Thank you for sponsoring this war. Appreciate you, family. No more AO, no more pause. It's no ditty. Y'all realize how crazy that is? Do y'all realize how crazy that is, though? But the one thing that's going to piss me off forever, forever, ever, that I'm not going to like, that's going to give me a nasty taste in my mouth, is the fact that niggas waited for him to fall out with the bankers, with the elite. He got into an argument over liquor. Got into a battle over liquor in the courts. And now they crushing him. Well, we should have been crushed him. When the truth comes out, we're going to be sitting up there dealing with maybe it's going to come out that Puff really did have something to do, maybe, allegedly, with the death of Biggie. You got a nigga sitting in jail right now that told the world that Diddy put a million dollars on Tupac. You have a witness sitting in a jail cell that was in the car that killed Tupac. That said that Biggie, I mean, Puff, I mean, Puff gave up a million dollars. Now, we all know that there was a fight that happened. However way that fight went down, that fight might have been staged. The fight might have been staged. But nevertheless, we know that Pac dead. And if they could prove through a third party which is a party that's alive right now, in jail right now, being charged with the murder right now, and pointing the finger at P. Diddy right now. It might come out that he had something to do with Biggie's death, Pac's death, Kim Porter's death, allegedly. And oh, I got a special one for y'all. Smokes, you're not going to believe this, but there is, in fact, a Diddy and Michael Jackson connection. Yes, the lawsuit that we have been covering and following, so much being revealed, you're not going to believe that somehow it is connected to Michael Jackson and his death. And I gotta be honest, I'm kind of terrified. I think this is gonna be the last day that I cover it because we're getting close to something that is very dangerous. All right, so I wasn't kidding at the top, guys. I am probably not going to cover this anymore because it is definitely getting a bit terrifying. Obviously, we covered this. If you haven't seen it, go back and watch. I believe it was Monday's episode. But yes, the Diddy lawsuit is absolutely crazy. Full stop. What if I told you guys that it is about to get even crazier, that there is directly a link to Michael Jackson's death? I want to be clear that when everything was going on with Michael Jackson, the lawsuits, his death, I thought that we were in full conspiracy theory territory when people were saying that Michael Jackson was killed. I actually know a lot of people that are in the industry who believe that Michael Jackson was killed, and I just thought it just sounds too too whacked out. Holy smokes. Did y'all hear her? She said this was getting scary because now... Michael Jackson's death, damn, this belt's too tight. Ah. Michael Jackson's death 
was linked to Diddy? Did y'all hear that? Was you listening? Was you listening? Yeah, we see how the numbers is jumping because y'all see how they playing with the numbers. That's why I keep telling y'all to hit the like button so we can get the numbers all the way up. I'm all the way up. But I ain't complaining though because I like for the haters to see what happens when her song Campbell get, into, get in the arena. Nigga, we up right now. We still up. These niggas talking about a nigga fell off. But the crazy part about it is, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. When this live goes off, right? The numbers, they're going to start me in my numbers like I got one person that watched the video. Then they're gonna, they, they probably not even going to let this video get 100,000 views. When you see numbers like this, you know I'm going to have 100,000 views easy. They want it to look like we falling off over here because this is the punishment that I get for being a quote unquote real nigga. That's why y'all heard when, you know, Hocus said it don't it don't pay to be like that. When you want to be a whistleblower and you want to be the savior of black, you can't save black people. Don't save them. They don't want to be saved. Don't save black people. Don't want to be saved. And they don't want to see you doing good. You know, at the end of the day, right? You look at New Edition, Boys the Men, some of the best artists that we've ever had, rappers and R&B. As time went on, they started to fade away, but they still had fans that loved them forever, forever, ever. That's what the industry does to you. I don't care how low my numbers get. I know that I'm going to go down in history as the, one of the best of the best that ever did it on this shit right here. I created my lane and I'm good. So you niggas that's coming in the comment section, my numbers is actually higher than they've been in months on a live. But you still trying to remind me that my channel was fading. You must really hate your life. Can you give me some water in this cup? Where's the new footage of Diddy at the airport pacing around nervously? Oh, so they, so they so they do got the footage of him at the airport. He does he, he decided to come back to rescue his kids. A song, why are you not outside? Why would I be outside? I'm in the house with thousands of people watching me. I don't want to go outside. It ain't nothing outside for me right now. I'm inside. This is like Yankee Stadium right now. We got 6,500 people in the building. What's good? I'm just mad I can't drink no Hennessy right now. <laughs> Yo, hi, somebody is watching you outside through the glass door. Turn around. I ain't worried about it. We got guns up in here, baby. We got legal guns up in here. I can legally shoot. We got legal guns up in this bitch, baby. Some nice ones, too. See, that's the thing. That's why you got to get out of New York. You have to get out of New York and get in those states where you can have guns. I wish a nigga would. I got a gun up in this bitch that I call I wish a nigga would. I wish a nigga would walk up in the glasses and play with me. Huh? I wish a nigga would. Devon. Thank you, Hassan Campbell. You inspire me to be great no matter how much pain is invoked. I really enjoy taking care of my family. I believe in everything you say, every video. I give you my last phenomenal cause of truth. Thank you, family. Appreciate you. Oh, shit. Thank you for sponsoring this war. Pissing the haters off. They see that pink like, oh, he just dropped $50? Oh, I really hate her song Campbell right now. You gave that nigga $15. He need to get a job. You got to have a J-O-B if you want to be with me. See, that's love right there. <laughs> they like to, y'all like to make people believe that everybody hates me. But then when y'all watch me, y'all see the love that my people give to me. That's why y'all hate me. These niggas be sitting up there on their channels talking shit about me with no super chat. Taylor, how's why black men rather be with Latina woman more than black woman? Because black women have too much attitude. Black women have too much anger. Black women been through too much pain. 
So it's easy for a coward ass black man to decide that he's not going to tolerate black women no more. But that's not all black women. I mean, black men. But at the same time, you can't get mad at a black man for being with a Latina because that Latina is also black. See the difference? You either a Negroid, Caucasoid, Mongoloid. There's no such thing as black. There's no such thing as Puerto Rican. There's no such thing as Haitian. You're a Negroid. You're a Caucasoid. You're a Mongoloid. And what's the other one? There's one more. You got to pick one. You don't separate yourself. We all the same. White guy here, I love black, brown woman. It's just what I was raised around. And yes, I don't have a problem with somebody getting with something that they was raised around. The reality of it is where I come from, in New York City, and I hear Miami's like that in some cases too, but in New York, blacks, Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, we are all raised in the same shit and piss. So of course we're going to be attracted to each other. We're supposed to be attracted to each other. The feds ain't coming unless they have a case. Diddy might be done. Pooch said this Diddy is done. When the feds come get you, they already have, they just looking for more evidence. They already have what they want on Diddy. Eric Kirkland. I hope Fabulous party with Diddy for the last time because Diddy is finished. I know you can't drink, Haas, but I took two shots of Henny for you, bro. <laughs> oh, man, this is one of those nights right here where Haas would have been toasted. Ostroid is the fourth one. Thank you, family. Coco, thank you for everything you do, Haas. Man, I'm not without y'all. We in the building tonight, man. That's why I'm telling y'all, hit that like button and piss them haters off. They are sitting right now, punching the air. Y'all seen that, 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 that movie on Boys in the Hood? You know, when Trey came in the house after the police searched him, they started punching the air. He throwing uppercuts. They mad as hell. We got numbers up in the building right now. They tight. The Illuminati sit up there and say, Hassan, we let you get some numbers right now. You better act right. They, that's what they're doing right now. They let me get a couple of niggas in the building. They're like, yo, you better be, you, you better, you better shut up, Hassan Campbell. You better not say nothing about all the stuff that you see coming in the future. You better, you better mind your business. You better shut up. Because we know you see what's getting ready to go down. You better not get into that conspiracy shit and wake these people up. Don't do it, Haas. Just stay to the celebrity gossip. And there's a reward for keeping your people stupid, Haas. Thank you, Illuminati. <laughs> Diddy got raided March 25th. Life After Death came out March 25th. I got to check to see if that is true. When did Biggie release his album March After or Life After Death? March 25th, 1997. Wow. According to Wikipedia, Life After Death is the second and final studio album by American rapper The Notorious B.I.G., released on March 25th, 1997, on Bad Boy Records and Arista Records. Wow. Cassie should buy Kid Cudi her car back. <laughs> Diddy about to be eating oodles and noodles, y'all. Diddy about to be eating some oodles and noodles, y'all. And you know the sad part about it is? He's going to have to... The, see, see the, the sad part about it is, is that... Diddy is going to have to put... Everything... In his kid's name. That's all he got to trust. 
And as time goes by, if the feds lock him up and his kids don't have to fear him, those twins, those little, those, those beautiful little girls, when they start to look into the rumors about that nigga having their mother killed, it's over for Puff. He ain't seen nothing yet until those girls flip. See, his boys, he got his boys where he want his boys at because Puff is like the best father in the world when you, when you really get, when you think about it because he got an asshole full of money. He got his kids driving cars that most of us wish and dream that we had. He got them kids in mansions. So now you could bring your kids home and have parties in mansions with your daddy and all your friends is there. And now y'all the biggest kids in the world. P. Diddy Kids is on another, on another level from all of our kids. But now, with the media and the scrutiny that the world has on them with the way they being humiliated, they feel like shit. Some things money can't protect you from. You're not going to believe this, but there is, in fact, a Diddy and Michael Jackson connection. Yes, the lawsuit that we have been covering and following. So much being revealed. You're not going to believe. So the there's a connection through this lawsuit. So in this, in this lawsuit that they have against Diddy, there's evidence that's going to come out in the courtroom. This is according to Candace Owens that somehow it is connected to Michael Jackson and his death. And I gotta be honest, I'm kind of terrified. I think this is gonna be the last day that I cover it because we're getting close to something that is very dangerous. All right, so I wasn't kidding at the top, guys. I am probably not going to cover this anymore because it is definitely getting a bit terrifying. Obviously, we covered this. If you haven't seen it, go back and watch. I believe it was Monday's episode, but yes, the... Why is it getting terrifying? But notice that after she covered this and she spoke on this, she got fired. Diddy lawsuit is absolutely crazy. Full stop. What if I told you guys that it is about to get even crazier, that there is directly a link to Michael Jackson's death? I want to be clear that when everything was going on with Michael Jackson, the lawsuits, his death, I thought that we were in full conspiracy theory territory where people were saying that Michael Jackson was killed. I actually know a lot of people that are in the industry who believe that Michael Jackson was killed. And I just thought it just sounds too, too whacked out. Holy so basically, is Candace Owen trying to say that? The same people that killed Michael Jackson was the same people that killed what, Kim? Inquiring minds want to know because obviously there's a method that they use. This nigga with this TV. See, what, what, what I like about Candace Owens is that she wasn't raised where we was raised. But the more she started to get into black culture, she started to run, or she's starting to remind me of the roundaway girl, the girls that come from where we come from. No, she ain't where we from. But the minute that she threw on her switch to be like us, they canceled her. And who the first one to sit up there and make a video laughing at her? People. Let me see, where's that at? Hi, I'm my son Leonard. 
And today we'll be discussing Candace Owens. You know Candace Owens, the woman who's been the black face of white supremacy, the one who sits in white rooms and tells them how blacks are responsible for everything that's happened to them in America. Yes, sir. Today, she was fired from the Daily Wire. And why, might you ask? After years of diminishing the black plight, saying that racism doesn't exist, saying that the lynchings of 3,500 people in a, a span of over 100 years wasn't really that much because of the population. After years of diminishing, diminishing every death from George Floyd to Breonna Taylor to Ahmaud Arbery and a host of others and blaming them for their own murders and saying that no one in America is experiencing racism. Racism is not even one of the 100 things that are affecting black communities. Yes, after saying things like that, she was relieved of her duties today because she had upset the Jewish community. Yes, it's okay for you to disrespect the black community. You can say what you want about the black community. You can diminish the plight here. You can say that um, Juneteenth is a fake holiday. You can say just about everything as a black person. You can diminish us at any time. But the minute that you dismiss and you diminish the plight of others, they'll show you that you're exposable. And Candace Owens found out the, the hard way that she wasn't that needed. That her black, her black rhetoric that she spews about black people was the only thing that they needed her for. They didn't need her to talk about white issues. They didn't need her to talk about what's going on in the Jewish communities. Her opinion only matters when she's disrespecting black people. And she found that out today. And why might you say that I'm talking about this? Because recently... Candace Owens has been on a black tour. Yes, she's went to the Breakfast Club, um, also platforms like Joe Budden, and she's been spewing how much black she is and how much she loves black people and all of these things, but it's never showed it. She has never done anything to contribute to the- Hold up, I gotta stop him right there. So, he basically told you how she was against us. And now when she decided to love her people, to learn her people about our fight, about our pain, she sacrificed her career for her people and started going on black platforms, advertising for her people. And you're going to kick her while she's down because now she turned over to her people away from the enemy, away from the enemy. And a nigga like you going to sit up there and drag her the way you dragging her because you don't never look the same. That's because of me. Candace Owens didn't do that to you, my son. I did that to you. She jumped on the bandwagon later on and started getting it on you and Black Lives Matter. And what she said about y'all was true. You mad because of y'all got exposed for stealing $90 million. Black people ask for reparations. Y'all got it. Y'all took it. Y'all ran with it. Y'all got it. Y'all took it. Y'all ran with it. And now this woman come back to the culture of being black and this is what you do to her? Because you mad because now you forever titled forever ever as an ambulance chaser. Ain't nothing worse than that. Now scratch that. We ain't gonna talk about the little kid that got murdered over here. Now scratch that. We ain't gonna talk about the little girl that got stabbed. Up. Ain't that big of a deal. Or we might say something. But we ain't gonna go outside. No, we're not gonna go outside to Brooklyn and go find a young boy who had to turn himself in. No, we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna sit on the internet and talk shit because Candace Owens is shining bright by herself. To the growth of the black community. Not one dollar has she contributed to any program to help black America. You can't see Candace Owens protesting in favor of anything that has to do with black America. But yes, today, Candace Owens is black again. And she wants us to stand by her side. I would like to tell Candace Owens the way that she's told us for many years. Go, And I mean that in the most beautiful way possible. I don't want any harm to come to you physically, but I need you to have some level of atonement. I need you to sit in your room and think about how black people have felt about the words that you've used for the last five or six years. Yes, think about Amar Arbery's mother. Yes, think about George Floyd's family. Yes, think about Breonna Taylor's family and how they felt when you called her a drug queen. Please
Please think about that. Think about the numerous black people's plights that you diminish every day because you have proximity to whiteness. So now... Rihanna Taylor, was a, she was a drug dealer. She did have drug charges. She was part of a, a drug, a, a, a drug a, a arena. She was. So when her house got raided, the police had reason to be there. Now, I'm not going to say that they should have killed her. No, I'm not going to say that. Because we know the, the conditions of being and, and having drugs in our community come from them. But you reap what you sow in life. But once again, that's a situation where you fought for that because you was an ambulance chaser and all of the cases that you y'all fought for, there was major lawsuits. If y'all don't see no money in the fight, y'all don't fight. You paid activists are like boxers. You get in the ring when you get paid. Now, there's a little less proximity to whiteness and you're black again. Think about that. You know, go back to those days when you're in high school and those people called your phone calling you nigger and the NAACP stepped up for you. And, and rather than being grateful that they stood by your side, you said that they used you, that they used you to raise funds, but you didn't say how they used you to raise funds for you. So you, just, you believe that an organization that decides to stand with you when no one else wants to stand with you should be poor. They should not have the funds to continue to run and, and stand by other black people because that's what you think. You think everything that's about black is a grift. Everyone who's doing anything black and staying up for black should not raise funds. They should not have money. They should not have nice things. Only black people that talk about white things. Only white people that talk about white things. So now maybe you'll sit back and you'll realize that you've been black all along. And they were utilizing you, Candace. Yes, they were utilizing you for their advancement. And now you are no longer needed. And they've thrown you to the side like they've done the rest of the niggers. God bless and have a good evening. Dreams, thank you for sponsoring this war. Appreciate you, family. What he sound like, y'all? What he sound like? What he sound like to y'all? That girl lost her job, according to him, on a black tour, going on black platforms, speaking up for black people and trying to get her black side, her black culture back that she never knew nothing of because she ain't from where she we from. Her struggle wasn't our struggle. Her fight wasn't our fight. But now that she took on the fight and became the heavyweight champion and she looking like she in the ring doing a rope of dope, she bobbing and weaving, she throwing punches and you mad? And you mad? Watch this nigga piss me off. He gonna piss me off. Watch this. He gonna piss me right off. Watch. Uncle John is a pain in the ass. He's a pain in the ass. Holy smokes, you're not going to believe this, but there is, in fact, a Diddy and Michael Jackson connection. Yes, the lawsuit that we have been covering and following, so much being revealed, you're not going to believe that somehow it is connected to Michael Jackson and his death. And I gotta be honest, I'm kind of terrified. I think this is gonna be the last day that I cover it because we're getting close to some. That part, I'm terrified. 
We're getting close to something. Roll the wind. Thank you for sponsoring this war, family. Appreciate you. Thank you for pissing the haters off. She said, we're getting close to something. And I'm starting to get afraid. Sometimes I go over and over and over the same topics for a reason. Because when it finally sets in and you finally start to realize Michael Jackson had a tour that said, this is it. Cat Williams told you in his comedy, what did he say? No nigga titles they shit. This is it. That title alone. That title alone. is crazy. That means this is it. It's over. Michael gone. Prince went on different platforms. Owned by who? The elite. Speaking out against them. After he took his oath to the Baphomet. Prince died the same way. Whitney Houston. In a bathtub. During the Grammys. With bruises all over her. Stay out that industry, man. I'd rather be here independent. I'm good here independent. Because then when you start hanging out with these rich people, we like women. We like women. Now you're around the people with money. They supply you with girls. You smash something 10 years down the line. You find yourself up in court with rape allegations, sexual assault allegations. Everybody that made it through that door has a rope around their neck. Everybody that made it through that door have a rope around their neck. These celebrities that you worshiping Images of Angela Bassett kissing Regina King. They made them do that. This is out of Angela Bassett's character. This is what they make you do. I lost all respect. These are two women that I love. Two black women that I love. Wait till you find out what they got on Claire Huxtable. Wait till you find out what they got on Claire Huxtable. There's no Cosby show no more. Watching the Cosby show don't even feel the same no more. The last thing in the last days of this era that we live in in America, the last memories we gonna have is of sexy rain. The last era, and this era right here, as we approach the man-made apocalypse that's coming, as we approach the man-made apocalypse, I ain't say God, I say the man-made apocalypse that's coming. Y'all don't even understand. Hell no, she not sexy. She ain't classy neither. But when you poor, when you raised off a of welfare cheese, oodles and noodles, you could barely, you have to knock on your neighbor's door to ask for eggs, to make breakfast, to, to borrow a cup of milk. 
for your kids to have cereal, if they even have cereal, where your mother is robbing Peter to pay Paul, where you barely have a pair of sneakers to make it to school. See, what you got to understand is, is that. Yo, would you turn that TV down? I'm about to go rock Uncle John snap snap box. <laughs> Stay good. Okay, okay. But see, some of y'all can't hear it, but I can. It's distracting me. That shit playing in my ears. Distraction. It's getting on my nerves. Let me tell y'all something, step-by-step, step, play by play, which I just need to focus on. And I'm telling y'all right now, you know, with everybody in the building, stay tuned because I'm about to be on hard on my Patreon. There's things like, I want y'all to understand something. It's like what Hocus said, when Hocus told y'all what we already knew. Academics warned me. He told me six months before I lost my monetization. He said, they're going to come for you. He told me step by step what was going to happen. I was going to lose my monetization and then next I'll be done lost my page. So in order for me to touch on the topics that I want to talk about, you're going to have to be on my Patreon and you're going to have to be on my Rumble. You won't have to find, see on Rumble? You can talk about whatever you want to talk about on Rumble and you don't go through the things that you, you get, like, like these copyrights and strikes and stuff like that where you got people, it, it's, it's like, so I never got niggas from his crew, like Herman Smalls, that I sit back and watch my live and watch, and niggas will watch my live from the beginning to end every day. And time stamp, when I say certain things that they feel go against the community guidelines, niggas that have this shit on paper, and then they have a crew of people mass flag me. Then they got hackers, which I already see while we live. I sit up there and do something like this. And then when the and then when the live comes back in and y'all watching the live, next thing you know, my numbers jump up. That's because they're holding the numbers back. And every time that glitch happens, it lets more people into the live. So that's where you see where the numbers jumping all the way up to 7,000 people. If they stop playing with my numbers, I would have 20 and 30,000 people watching me the same way academics do. But then you got to understand also, I am a competition to their agenda. And the people on these platforms that pushes their agenda, when you watching them, see how we had 6,700? When you watching them, you see, do you see? Did I prove my point to y'all? I don't know what's going on with the royal family. What I do know is, is that Diddy's in troubles. And we ain't picking no cotton round here, Diddy. We ain't picking no cotton round here no more, Diddy. <laughs> I ain't gonna even lie. What's happening right now, I don't laugh at people's pain, but you got people right now that's laughing at Diddy, and you know why they laughing at Diddy? They laughing at Diddy because now they watching the house Negro get beat by the slave master. The slaves are getting beat all the time. We getting oppressed all the time. We getting humiliated all the time. But niggas like Diddy, now it's his turn.
because he thought he was untouchable. Yeah, he did. What I'm going to tell everybody that's watching me, stack up on bottled water. Stack up on bottled water. Make sure you got extra canned goods. Make sure you got batteries. Make sure you got flashlights. Make sure you have something to protect yourself. Make sure you got something to protect your family. Because we could talk about Diddy, but there's events that's going to take place in different parts of the world, in different parts of this country coming soon. Very, very soon. There's going to be people that don't have nothing to eat because they didn't prepare for rainy days. And when a person don't have nothing to feed themselves, they're going to eat you. They're going to eat your children and they're going to come get what you got. There's going to come a time in America that you're going to have to cover your doors and windows and hide the smell of you cooking food because hungry people are going to be hungry. Pay attention to the monies that's being spent. Pay attention to the bills that's being passed as we are distracted with celebrity gossip. Pay attention to <coughs> pay attention to the military being deployed on certain dates when certain events is getting ready to happen. Pay attention to your circle before they hurt you. Pay attention to these politicians. The eclipse is a distraction for the next move. The eclipse is nature taking its course. If it is actually the real eclipse. Because we are living in the days and times where they have programs where they could put holographs through satellites in the sky and make you see what they want you to see. These people have the power now through technology to make you see Jesus. I mean, when you turn on the TV, I could turn on the TV right now. We could watch dragons and watch Game of Thrones. And you want to see Queen Daenerys riding down the sky with a dragon? Well, the same way you could see that shit on TV, now they have the power to put it in, in the air. This technology where you can see those same dragons, instead of seeing them on TV, you can watch them in front of your face in the streets. Now, just imagine, oh, see how when the conversation switched and we started talking about that, we went from um, 6,700 to 55, it took a whole thousand people out. This is me teaching y'all a lesson. Now, I can keep you entertained like academics. But if y'all want the real conversation, we have to go. Now you see how we shot back up to 6,000? That's them playing with the numbers. That's not people going out with them lumps of amounts of numbers like that. That's them playing with the numbers. Shut up! You see Putin said Jesus was black. Man, and they shot up the, um, the opera the following day. Yeah, I see, I, see, I see them playing the military mind game. See, what, what I want y'all to understand is, right, and I ain't going to get too deep into it because we're going to stay on Diddy, but like I said, I, I need for y'all to prepare for madness because some of the stuff that you may see, like, let me draw a picture. Let me, let me paint a picture for y'all, right? Imagine looking up in the sky and seeing Jesus, Right? Imagine looking up in the sky and seeing Jesus. Then imagine looking up in the sky and seeing an alien invasion, right? And as you see this alien invasion, 
or maybe even Jesus. Now, technology. These people got technology where they could talk to you telepathically. They can talk directly into your brain where you're not hearing it there, but now you're talking into your brain. And as you looking in the sky, you're seeing Jesus and you're hearing him talking to you telepathically. And at the same time as Jesus is cursing you and giving you his wrath, you experiencing an earthquake. Huh? So now you see seeing Jesus or alien invasion because some portal that opened up called Project Blue Bring and you're dealing with holographs and you can't tell the difference. Now you're dealing with frequencies and when you start dealing with the frequencies, those same frequencies that you're dealing with They can make you have shortness of breath. They can make you feel like you're in a microwave. So now what you're seeing, you're actually feeling. Y'all don't understand that the shit that these people have, you wouldn't even believe it. The technology that they have and what they can do with this technology you wouldn't even believe it. What I will say to you is, whatever they plan comes into play, it will bring about all of these governments merging together as one. What you're seeing here Yeah, John over there just crashing my party while I'm working. <laughs> Nigga said no diddy. <laughs> John is a pain in, he's a pain in the ass. He won't be all up in the kitchen. I might as well just put him on camera, right? And make him earn some money, right? But being that he wanted to be just be crashing my whole goddamn show, all that damn noise he over there making. Now he done turned the TV down. He going through the cabinets, putting shit in the sink, acting like he getting ready to wash dishes. No, I ain't washing dishes. Bullshit. Nigga said, I ain't washing no dishes. Bullshit. What you over there doing, John? Hey, you on camera now. We gonna put you on camera, being that you wanna crash. Look, look at him. Now you want to take the dog. How you want to take the dogs out while I'm working? Right after you finish. Oh, right, right after you finish. Look at him. But you probably be around 12, 12.30. Look at him. Look at him. Crashing my party. He think it's funny. <laughs> Leave Uncle John alone. <laughs> Uncle John's a pain in the ass. That nigga be getting up five o'clock in the morning yelling at dogs. Shut up! Get over here! Like dogs, it's five o'clock in the morning. It's looking crazy. They don't go out before I go to work. I'm going to the program. They ask for shit up there. It's nigga crazy. Give this nigga some sleepy time tea. 
<laughs> Nigga said, not even that shit gonna work. Yeah, well, so what we gonna have to do to get your ass out of my goddamn life? Crazy ass. Let me see, I'm gonna go back in the room and turn the TV up. Yeah, that's brother man from the fifth floor. Yep. That's exactly right. <laughs> Nigga, brother man from the fifth floor. You <laughs> stop playing with me. <laughs> You're just looking for something, right? What you looking for? This nigga just crashing my whole shit. I'm dead. Yeah, I bet. Look at this nigga. Now he like, fuck it. I'm going to just get loud with it now. Look at this nigga. Who the hell told this nigga to come in here and put away food? Told him it got to be covered up. While I'm working, it got to be covered up. Nigga <laughs> said, get out the kitchen, Diddy. <laughs> oh, somebody said, tell him to stop bending over like Meek. <laughs> oh, man. He went to the room and told the dog, he's doing his live. You can't go nowhere. He's telling the dog on me right now. He's doing his live. You can't go nowhere, buddy. <laughs> oh, man. Nah, he ain't no, he, he ain't no P. Diddy. He ain't no Mook. Is, hey, Uncle John ain't getting down like that. That nigga's just a nut. Yeah, pain in the ass. He about to make some videos in a minute, though. You crashing my shit like that. It'd be hard to get back on the track when niggas distracted you. You know how hard it is to sit up here and entertain thousands of people for hours at it. And every time you try to get into your thoughts, you got this nigga in the background opening up cabinets, closing cabinets, turning the TV up, yelling at dogs. Nigga be in there rapping sometimes like he DMX. DMX! <sighs> well, did he get picked up? Shut up, dog! When the feds come out and do what they're doing, all you gotta do is look at the pattern, right? Before the, before the feds locked up R. Kelly, they raided R. Kelly's establishment. Before the feds locked up Irv Guyton, they raided his establishment. There's a pattern on how they destroy these black entrep entrepreneurs and they do it the same exact way. Same script, different cast. Uh, Kelly is probably happy right now, dancing in jail. He said he was going to take the other the others down. Jay-Z is next. R. Kelly can't take nobody down. See, you got to understand something, right? The next nine times out of 10 that might go down, might not be Jay-Z, it might be 50 Cent. Because 50 Cent right now is in court beefing with those liquor companies, corporations. When you beef with those big dogs, they spank you. When you beef with those big dogs, they spank you. 50 better watch yourself next. 
You can't outshine the master and you can't bite the hand that feeds you. It's simple. Said he need God's forgiveness, not ours. <laughs> Right, they're trying to spend 50. 50 better watch out. These people got something on everybody, man. They got something on everybody. That's why it's like we fall in love with some of these rappers and actors because we grew up with them over time, watching them perform, listening to their music. So we feel like they're part. They have songs that's dedicated to a special part or a special memory of our life which makes us, we cherish the memories. We was raised, we grew up on this music. We grew up on entertainment, so we love them. But they don't love you. They don't love you. Do I think that they trying to use this to take our mind off of what's really going on? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. See, what you got to understand, when there's a price when you go through the door. And when you go through that door, they can sit up there and pretty much pick and choose who they want to sacrifice, sacrifice for a humiliation ritual. It's Diddy's time right now. When you need a big distraction, you need a big dog. When you need a big distraction, you got to get a big fish. You want You got to get a big dog. Diddy is one of the biggest dogs you're going to get. Diddy just better be lucky that right now he's facing court procedures. But the flip side to it is not too many niggas beat the feds. When the feds come to get you, they already got you. <sighs> Shut up. When the feds come get you, they already got you. The question is, how much do they already have on them? So now they just looking for little nooks and crannies through the house to shake his world up a little bit, put a little bit of distraction out there, and then they're going to do the same thing they did with R. Kelly. Put out the documentary, Raiders establishments, Wait a few months down the line when bills is being passed and laws they don't want you to pay attention to. And boom, R. Kelly's in jail. R. Kelly has a trial. It's the end of R. Kelly. This nigga's having a whole full conversation. Of course, Kobe Bryant playing was shot down. Of course, Kobe Bryant was a sacrifice. It's the price that you pay when you go through the door. You niggas believe that basketball is real? No, it's not. You don't get in the league just for your talent. They recruit you. Those games are rigged. Those boxing matches that you watch is fake. Niggas was sitting up there talking about I was fronting when I sat up there and say when I when I said that I'm not watching on the Super Bowl. I didn't watch the Super Bowl. I seen clips and parts of the performance. I can't tell you what team plays for what and who plays on what team because I don't care. Once you start to realize that the shit is fake, I loved wrestling growing up. I was a hawkamaniac. I just want to be American. What? Oh, yeah, the macho man, Randy Savage. The ultimate warrior. What? When I found out that wrestling was fake, it don't hit the same no more. So now me sitting up there watching these boxing matches, they're fake. I can't watch sports no more because it's fake. Problem with you people, you can't tell the difference between what's real and what's fake. Some of you niggas can't even tell that y'all females be faking orgasms. It's fake. <laughs> Yo, the last time 
I did a live and I was talking about the signs of these females not liking these niggas and dudes being in a relationship and sex being the last thing to go in a relationship when you're not having sex in your relationship, your relationship is, is on the rocks. Yo, do you know how many people came to me in my DM? I'm going through my DM. Niggas is cursing me out. One nigga said, he, he said, me and my wife agreed not to have sex. So we didn't have sex for a year. Nigga, if your wife didn't have sex with you for a whole full year, she doesn't like you. She's not attracted to you, my nigga. <laughs> if a whole year went by and your wife didn't give you no booty, she's not attracted to you. I'm just saying, don't blame me. Blame her. Yeah, side, side chick is in full effect. A uh, year? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Don't get mad at me. A year, who in the hell would buy that dog? Hell no. Y'all niggas better sit up there and start paying attention. Some of these females, nigga, let me tell you something, man. If some of y'all niggas think y'all players. Some of these females are more players than y'all. Remember, every nigga that learned how to be a player and learned how to be a liar, they learned how to lie from their mama sneaking around with the side niggas. Your mother was the first person that taught you how to lie. Remember that. Yo, how's that at the end of the of, of Diddy's video he released with his album in 97? Took a jet and ran from the feds. Could this have a deep own meaning? Like he was telling us what the plan is. Um, I gotta see what video you're talking about. What exactly video is that? I mean, some people believe in time travel. Some people believe in, in time travel. Sometimes, you know, you know what I when I realized, um, it's like when you watch Eminem's video. I think it was Toy Soldier. I'm not sure. Where in the video he de he depicted um the death of Proof, but in real life, Proof died the same exact way at a club. Sometimes shit happens like that. T.I. came out alive, but T.I. is not the same. And then you got to keep in mind, T.I. T. I. went to jail because he was set up for the feds because he was still playing in the streets. That's a little bit, a, a little different. T.I. didn't get flipped on by the elite. T.I. got flipped on because he got lined up by a snitch. And see, the dangerous part about it is, let me tell y'all something, right? Me, for example, I'm a street dude. Now, if I just sit up there and I say, all right, I'm going to take $10,000 and I'm going to pay it to some of the little homies to go knock a nigga head off that I got beef with. Because when you get to my level and you got hundreds of thousands of millions of people that done seen you in a week and you that popular, you can't just go outside and pick up a gun and just shoot somebody like that. You can. But when you have everything to live for.
I just know that that's not havoc with those stitches and that dog that he's flipping on telling them that he's sick of the dog with the stitches. Steve is a special ed student. Hodge, you got to go out to the man cave, my boy. Nigga, I'm in a total different state. In a total different house. Nigga said, this dumbass nigga said, Jay, whatever your name is, Ja Bird, Birdie, Ja Birdie, the fact that you think you're famous is wild, yo. I have 6,000 people, 7,000 people in the building. When this live end, I'm going to screenshot it in my creative studios and I'm going to make a video just for you. Nine times out of 10 when it's live and it's, this is pro it's probably going to have like about 30,000 people that viewed the same video that you watching right now. You are in attendance where there was 7,200 people in the building. Before I deleted my videos off of my YouTube page, I had over a billion streams on YouTube. Some of your A-list celebrities don't have that. Yes, I'm famous. Whether you like it or not, yes, I am. And not only am I famous, but because you are sitting in the audience, you in the auditorium, in your TV or on your device watching me, you're watching total strangers put money into my super chat because they love me. So you're actually getting frustrated because not only am I famous, but I'm actually making money through YouTube and the people that sponsor in this wall that's putting super chat just to piss you off. Yeah, that's me. I'm famous. Get over it. What you going to do when a song can't run well on you? You're tight. Are you big man or little man? Big man. Look, which one is it? Get that hate out of your heart. It's one of the moments I wish I was sipping on some Hennessy so I could talk my shit, like really, really talk. Like, it's, the, it's the month of Ramadan, though, so I can't go in and say disrespectful shit because I fast all day not to be disrespectful at night. But this is one of them, like you, you asking for it. We don't need Trump. We need God. Shantae Bell, thank you, family, for sponsoring this war and pissing that hating ass nigga off. No, Henny, you're going to end up in the projects getting bottles tossed at you again. Nah, that ain't going to happen. Shout out to the 6,200 people that's in the building now. You see how that work? Voila. 6,200 people back in the building. Are you not entertained? Some of them dusty ass YouTubers that y'all be watching over the dirty section, they don't do these numbers. I missed a lot. I came home from work and Diddy's booming on the internet. Nigga, I laid down, took a nap. Soon as I picked my device up, all I see was Diddy, 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 Diddy. I was like, damn. And all I could think is 50 Cent said, Diddy did it. <laughs> Nigga, 50 said, Diddy did it. Diddy with Russell Simmons. I don't know. 
Listen, I don't know where Diddy at, but if I was Diddy, y'all don't hear that, right? It's an ugly situation with Diddy because I don't know where Diddy's at, but I know Diddy kids. I wouldn't want to be in a situation where, where, where my kids is at gunpoint and got handcuffs put on them. No, because shit happens sometimes, especially being in the hood. You get into a shootout, you clap a nigga. Nigga try to rob you or a nigga stun on you. You got to defend yourself. You clap a nigga. The police run up in your house. They got your family hum humiliated. I've been through that. I understand that. But how do you explain to your kids that the reason why they being terrorized and detained, humiliated, TMZ, cameras, media everywhere is because your daddy is on the news and in the word of the news, the news is saying The news. news right now are following this is what the, the news is saying. Homeland Security conducting a raid at a house in Holmby Field Hills, believed to be connected to Sean Combs, the rapper and music executive, perhaps being linked to a sex trafficking investigation. You got some shots of a few. And the helicopter's over your house. And you looking like, what? My dad? And then you're trying to get over the fact because you love your father, but you just had to really, really, really look all over the place. Every device you look at, this Cassie, a woman that y'all grew up around, accusing him of some of the worst shit that you could actually do to a person. I stand on what I said and I meant what I said. Cassie was in a relationship with Diddy. I don't care what anybody say. And I'm going to stand on that because I'm going to stand on that Because as men, whatever you go through with your wife in a relationship, your girlfriend in a relationship, it's your personal business. But through Cassie, we learning as men the way you have sex with your woman in the bedroom whether it's a threesome, foursome, fivesome, she agreed to that shit. She left the relationship, came back to the relationship three times because she wanted that lifestyle. And see, when you got a nigga that pigeon feeds you, he fed her like a bird, he gave her enough to feel good for the moment, but not enough. So she had to keep coming back. Then she had to sit back and watch young Miami getting all the publicity that she wanted for herself. And all of that animosity start building up as she ran off with the workout dude. She blew it with one of his helpers. And when that money started running running down, she used the nigga deepest, darkest secrets. Like, oh my God, you're just going to keep on doing everything that you possibly could do.
She used everything that didn't even have nothing to do with the relationship. I don't care what anybody say. Cassie's foul. I don't feel sorry for her. She's just as dirty as Diddy. Cassie is just as dirty as Diddy. You find yourself in a relationship. They found naked pictures of Meek Mill's French Montana. Keep speaking facts, Haas. You know, that's terrible, allegedly. I got to say, allegedly. But what? Listen, man. I don't care what nobody say. I don't care what nobody say, right? People will criticize me and say some of the craziest shit in the world. But that's Meek. That's Diddy. That's Meek's balls on Diddy's ass. How did you get here? Your nuts ain't supposed to be there. French, your nuts is not supposed to be on Diddy's backside. French, and the niggas got mad at me, right? Niggas got mad at me. But French, can you please explain to me why is your nuts on Diddy's backside? Now, y'all notice that I'm the only one that said anything about that? Why nobody else ain't said nothing about that? Because they want to go through the door. Shut up! I don't think y'all realize it, but when you sit back and you you reminisce and you you look at Total, Biggie, the era of the 90s where we came from, music, you sit back and you look at Master P, no limit. It's over. Rest in peace. It's over. 15 minutes of fame. One of the biggest entrepreneurs in the black community ever. The same way they built him up, now they got that nigga crying because he can't sell his cereal. All right, come on, Joe. Master P, crying because he can't sell Cereal. Walmart won't put it on the shelf. Nigga, open your own supermarket. Death Row. Shug. Biggest CEO. Eliminated. Irv Gotti. Ashanti. Ja Rule. Vita. You know what I mean? Um, gone. Rough Riders, DMX, Eve, Drag On, The Locks, gone. Gone. 
Y'all don't see a pattern? Corey should be whole to whole, not pole to pole. Pole to whole. French Montana, fruity for that. Yay, fruity for that. For the spike kid. Different cloth. Thank you for sponsoring this war. Now we're looking at Diddy. I mean, ask yourself a question. When the last time you seen Bad Boy release any music? Puff built and made some of the best artists we've ever seen in life. And when you, it's like, when, when, when yo, I was locked up in 94. When, when, when Craig Mack came out, with flavor in your ear, I was in jail. That shit was bananas. Hip hop was was the best. Look at it. When you watch these TV shows, these movies, they told you in different scenes and different scenarios what the future was going to be like. And the music era that we come from, it's over. It's over. As if we all came together as one against the government, would we be able to overthrow them? No. Absolutely not. You want the ugly truth or you want a beautiful lie? You were dealing with A superpower that has the power to push a button. Push a button. And when they push that button, they can create a tsunami to wipe out the whole East Coast. Tsunami wipes out the whole West Coast. We are all living close to fault lines. That's death by design. They created your community and they put you where whenever they want to create and tap that button, the reset button. When people say stupid shit, like, oh, we've been waiting for Jesus forever. Nigga, have you searched the earth and seen how many villages, how many civilizations was destroyed before you and your time? No, you haven't. Civilizations are being wiped out in front of your face as we speak right now. Then he came back to the States for his kids, I hope. I would hope so too. But the truth of the matter is, the way it's looking, Diddy's sons is just as guilty as him. So when you sit back and you analyze that, it's like, damn, they just pulled a thousand people out of this live again. Like whoever y'all is behind, behind the scenes, could y'all just leave the live alone? Y'all know y'all going to mess with it when I get off the live. you are going to start messing with the, the live all over. But could y'all leave us alone for right now, God damn it? And everybody that's in the building, hit the like button. I want everybody that's in the building right now to hit the like button because I want to see if the people in the building surpass the likes that we, we got 5,000 people in the building. We just had 6,200 people in the building a minute ago. So obviously they kicking, they kicking and they booting people out of the live and they trying to reset whatever glitch that they had on my channel. So what I want you people to do is that's watching me right now. Just take your lazy asses because you ain't doing nothing but watching my fat ass sit here anyway and Hit the like button. Just press that like button. And let's just do a test to see if the numbers we have in the building pass the numbers that we got. Now that I sat up there and I said that to y'all, instead of having 5,000 people, we went back up to 5,500. Because if y'all actually hit the like button, we would have passed and it would have shown that we got more people that, that like the button than that they showing us in the building. The game is rigged. It is. Uh, Kelly's the first, Diddy now and Jay next. 
You know what? It's sad because when you read in between the lines, they basically showing you how they built you up and they destroy you. And after they destroy you, they replace you or Diddy. Diddy will be replaced with somebody else. They'll make another Diddy. They'll make another Hove because they made them. There's plenty of talent amongst the slaves. There's plenty of talent amongst the slaves. The only thing that we have in poverty pet and pain is singing and dancing. So when you take these rappers and actors and you take the most ignorant rapper and you put them at the top of hip hop of the rap game, now you control the outcome of the music you control the emotions in the music. We went from groups of naughty by nature. We went from Red Man. We went from Wu-Tang Clan to drill music. When niggas actually started playing laser tag and assassinating each other, shout out to the 6,400 people back in the building. I told y'all they playing with the numbers. Hit the like button. You gonna tell me the numbers jumped up? 1,400? Different claw, thank you for sponsoring this war. Allah is doing his work during his Ramadan. No, nah, Allah don't have nothing to do with that. That's Satan spanking his children. God don't have nothing to do with what's going on with Diddy. The devil was not your friend. The devil will give you power and destroy you. When you study and you believe in religion or spirituality, you do understand that there's a higher power. And this higher power that they are worshiping is evil. He is not your friend. He will whisper into the hearts of men. to cause us to hate each other, to cause us to leave our children, to cause us to divorce our wives. The shaitan would rather see your son have a sex change. The shaitan would rather see you with a man instead of a woman. Picture a little boy looking for his daddy. Mommy, where my daddy at? And she point over there. And that little boy look over there. And he see P. Diddy and Meek Mills together. Think about it. God ain't got nothing to do with this. God will remove himself from you. When you take an oath of Satan, what you got to understand is when you're dealing with God and you're talking about God, right? And it's all about God, right? God is with those who are striving to do better. He's with the righteous. He's not with the wicked. He's with the righteous. But the devil, the shaitan, the envious one, the one who practiced envy and whisper into the hearts of men with envy and cause division amongst men with envy. He also spent times with the righteous. He also spent times with your friends. That's why your friends envy you. That's why your friends, when they see you trying to better yourself in life, it caused friction between y'all. When you elevate yourself in life, financially and you work for something and you start accumulating shit your friend starts envying you you didn't go through the door you figured your shit out and now they ain't feeling good about you having success they're not feeling good about you uh, 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 becoming an entrepreneur or you just feeling like i ain't got time for the clubs no more i ain't got time for the block no more i'm busy over here with my kids 
The first thing they think in their in mind, because they whisper into the whisper, the wasp wasp, the whisper of evil that enters their heart. Oh, that nigga over there, he think he better than you. No, he doesn't think he better than you. He still loves you, but he loves his family more. And he's moving on to the things, the responsibilities that he's supposed to do in his life. He doesn't think that he's better than you. If you only got 24 hours in a day and you working eight hours out of the day, you sleeping eight hours out of the day, you got children, can, can, I, can I really, really afford to spend five hours on the block? Drinking butt losses? Or chicken ass? As you elevate yourself, even if you ain't getting that much money, you're just paying your bills. But time, it's like this month of Ramadan right now. Spend a lot of time focusing on the month of Ramadan, but I still got to work. See, that's the thing when you see people talking about, oh, he ain't fat. No, I fasted all day. Got up early, make my smoothies, drink my smoothies so I can keep myself hydrated and pray and fast throughout the day. Now it's back to work. You still have to work. The bill still got to be paid because ain't nothing going on but the rent. As I said it plenty of times, evil is tired of hiding. Evil, evil is ready to come out and play. Yes, Corey, thank you for sponsoring this war. Drew, when you get too close to the truth in Hollywood, someone disappears. Even if it's Diddy isn't 100% guilty, someone will X him out to save others higher up. Yes, they will make a sacrifice. Yes. In many different cultures, whether it be Christianity, Islam, Vudon, you read in the Bible, it talks about how people made sacrifices to God. Well, there's different gods in people's mind. And the Shaitan, you know, the Baphomet, he's one, he's one of their gods. And there's sacrifices that come with the Baphomet. What man let his kids go down like that, though? P. Diddy. Because the truth of the matter is he should have got his kids away from him. He should have got his kids away from him. And the reality of it is, P. Diddy, if you're looking at, you, you look at me right now, which nine times out of ten, you probably not. You sweating. Yo, you sweating bullets right now. Get rid of those mansions. Get your kids ready to live in regular houses now. They're not going to be able to keep up and afford those mansions. So now you better go get them a little $500,000 house or maybe even a million dollar house and let them learn how to live like regular people. Because the reality of it is your money is about to disappear. Poof. Ramos. Nigga said Diddy Island. <laughs> you know what's crazy? Because that's funny, but it ain't. It's funny, but it ain't funny. Because we already know what's happening on Diddy's Island. It ain't Epstein's Islands no more. It's Diddy's Island. It's sad. In a minute, people ain't going to even really re remember Epstein no more. But it's amazing how. It's amazing how. Epstein's list came out and we still ain't seen nobody arrested yet. Epstein's list came out. Who was arrested? Who? Oh, wow, the Dittler. <laughs> the names, oh my God, the Dittler. Dittley, 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 D.
See, that's the thing right there, right? What is going to come out on Meek Mills? What's going to come out on Meek Mills? Meek, Meek. Y'all think Young Miami involved? Everybody's involved. You got to understand something, right? Diddy is the king of the castle. And everybody else goes out to do the dirty work for him. Diddy can't go out to regular people like that. People have to bring... <laughs> They, they got to bring this to him. And you got to understand, evil loves innocence. Evil love innocence. The only thing did he beat in this is meat. Wow. <laughs> he did he ain't even beating that. Did he got too many people to do that for him? Like meat like French Montana, like Fab. And see, this is the shit, all jokes aside, and I, it, it's, it's, it's like, the way I feel about this, Fab know what time it is with Diddy. He knows what Diddy was capable of. So then we see you partying with these people. If you are in any, in any, Industry party, you're evil. If you part of any industry party, anything in that industry, you're evil. There's nothing good in the industry. The jig is up. And the last thing, everything is going to be revealed to you. You sit back and you analyze, you, you, know, you know, the rumors, the rumors, the rumors about Usher that's now in its legal paperwork. The rumors about Usher and what Puff did to Usher, which is part of this court, these court, the rumors? How, my son, how could you flip on somebody for not standing next to Puff when there's rumors about Puff making that nigga anal cavity bleed? That grown man put that little boy in the hospital. Oh, that's right. Y'all not asking Usher why he went back around Puff. Because he was raised, he was groomed into it. Usher was groomed into that lifestyle. But y'all not mad at Usher. Y'all mad at Hassan Campbell though, right? Keefe D told. Keefe D ain't the only one that told. Y'all sit back and y'all analyze it, right? Gene Dill. Gene Dill was the police. Gene Dill was the police. All that shit did Gene Dill doing, acting like he exposing Diddy. He was working for Diddy when Diddy was the Diddler. He was working with Diddy when Diddy was doing all this evil shit, why he didn't arrest him? Why he didn't call the FBI and expose Diddy then? Now he washed up. Ain't nobody using him in the industry no more. He banned from the industry. He sat around all that evil shit for all these years. And, and now you want to expose him? All them years he was seeing all this shit. He experienced all of these shit. He's still working with, with, with Diddy, with Danny D. Kane. He's sitting around Danny D. Kane and Diddy when Diddy said he was going to sit up there and drug them girls and let all his entourage fuck those girls, right? Because that's, that's what Gene Dill said. Why didn't he call the FBI and warn them that Diddy was this type of monster? He was there when this shit was happening. And this is the shit that be killing me. Y'all be sitting up there praising this nigga like, yeah, he exposing Diddy. Why didn't he expose it when Diddy was doing that? J-Lo seen it a long time ago. Nigga, J-Lo 
Did you hear what Jamie Foxx and Shook Knight had to say about Jennifer Lopez? In order for Jennifer Lopez to be in that industry, they smutted her out. They smutted Jennifer Lopez out. J-Lo slept her way to the top. Nigga, your favorite rapper slept his way to the top. Y'all wasn't listening when River Fox got on TV and told everybody that 50 was fucking Soldier Boy? 50 sued everybody else why he didn't sue River, River Fox. River told y'all that 50 fucked Soldier Boy. Why 50 didn't sue her? The game told y'all that 50 was sleeping with Young Buck. I mean, oh, not Young Buck, Lloyd Banks. Y'all thought he was joking. He said, Young, he said, Lloyd Banks is going to get tired of 50 and he's going to blow it. Shout out to Lloyd Banks for blowing it. Do y'all not understand that these are rich rituals in the industry? Diddly, Diddy ain't the only diddler. All of them are. That's the part that y'all missing. Soon as Tupac came home from jail, what's the first thing that Tupac said when he flipped on Dre? He said, J Dre ain't making beats. He ain't made beats in a long time. He busy running around sleeping with men. Y'all thought it was a joke because he was dissing him. So y'all thought it was a joke. He told y'all what was happening. Y'all didn't listen. Pac came home from jail. He also told you it was all over the internet to probably like two years ago. They took it down. Pac was all over the internet talking about how Quincy Jones tried to sleep with him. Quincy Jones. All of these niggas is guilty of the same shit. You can't get in Satan's house without going through Satan's door and playing by Satan's rules. All these podcasters that you see that's bigger than me, you don't see them letting me get a million subscribers. Everybody here watching me right now know I already got, I got over a million subscribers. Y'all know I got way more. I guarantee you I probably got like 10 million subscribers. They're never going to let it show on my analytics. They're never going to give me that because it's a door. It's a door. Show y'all something real quick, right? Because a lot of these people also are getting mad because content creators are making more than these rappers. A lot of these rappers are broke. Content creators are making more money than them. So, here it is. We got Math Hoffa, my expert opinion. Math has 967,000 subscribers. Shout out to Math, that's my dude. Now, two, a, a day ago, 2,000 views. Two days ago, 2,000 views. Three days ago, 1,000 views. Three days ago, 3,600 views. 3,100 views. 11,000 views. Do y'all understand that mathematically, the numbers that they give in math, the nigga got a million subscribers and he's not even, the views that they doing, niggas platforms are purposely being destroyed. You know why? Because we didn't go through the door. The door, the door. So now the platforms that didn't take the oath, that didn't go through that door, they're playing with our numbers, but then you'll see a nigga like Academics, a nigga that went through the door, that sat there with Takashi 6 9 and told you that you got to connect the dots. A nigga that's been signed to them, he's live doing 34,000 views 
at one time on the same topic that I'm doing. Because there's a door. Ain't no friends in this, in this industry. The last five days, look at Math Hoffa views. There's a YouTube short of Justin Bieber in a hoodie giving neck to um, Odell Beckham. Oh, we seen that? We seen that? Math Hopper views is scary. We on the ninth day now. 6,000 views, 4,000 views, 4,000 views, 2,000. Math, math platform is being targeted. Ain't no affairs and buts about it. So me, I'm just going to say right here, Masa, Masa, I don't want no more troubles. I'm going to be happy we got 5,000 likes, 5,800 people in the building. Shh. Don't tell nobody. Different cloth. Thank you for sponsoring this wall. Appreciate you. Yo, Haas, it's all at the end of, uh, of the end. Been around the world music videos. Diddy. Did he hops on a plane and ran from the feds? I've been around the world. I've been around. DJ Academics has been doing this for 10 years plus, but you have to understand something. DJ Academics is a puppet. And you have to understand something. When you are good at distracting your own people and keeping them filled with celebrity gossip, evil will promote you and push you because it likes you to be in the algorithm of Satan so that you can keep your people dumbed down. Meanwhile, you see a, a dude like Wesley Muhammad just got his whole page snatched. Because regardless of what I feel about the nation of Islam, some of them brothers over there are powerful. And if you wake the people up too much, they will tell you that your content goes against their community guideline and snatch your whole page down. Darryl Jones, thank you for sponsoring this world. Family, appreciate you. Thank you for pissing the haters off. What's going to happen to Haiti? Whatever the, whatever the elite want to happen to them. Because even though Haiti might have won a rebellion once, they don't have the power to do it again. They don't have the resources to do it again. And even sometimes when you think in history that they won in history, you got to keep in mind is that we've been infiltrated from day one. So sometimes when you feel like you won, the party that won the war was also controlled by the evil ones. So you thinking you won, but really the evil one won because they sponsored, it's sort of like with Hitler. When Adolf Hitler was going to war, Prescott Bush, which is George Bush's grandfather, grandfather Prescott Bush was sponsoring both sides of the war. So whoever won the war, the Bushes still won that war because they sponsored that war. Behind every war, behind every battle that you see, it's evil. And the powers that be, they're in position of power. If you win, they win. It's just sort of, it's sort of like with Trump and Biden. No matter which one of them win, they both working for the same devil. It's like going into the precinct and you being interrogated. Good cop, bad cop. 
Niggas is playing military mind games with you. Only reason why I'm rooting for Trump is because I like a disrespectful motherfucker. I like a person that will sit up there and tell you the truth. I like racist people. I like for a person to tell me, I can't stand you, nigga. They're sitting smiling in my face and act like they love you, but the whole time they plotting to stab you in your back. Smile in your face. All the while they want to take your place. The backstabbers. Backstabbers. You know what it feel like when people pretend? How many niggas got back doors, back, back door by the right hand man? You know how many niggas bust their ass to take care of female? That needed that nigga, but didn't want that nigga. And you taking care of these females that hate your guts. But won't get out of your face because you a provider. But as soon as that female get a chance. To show you how much she really don't like you. You're going to be sitting up there crying. Your man going to call you a sucker and tell you to get over that wicked bitch. And he going to tell you, I've been trying to tell you that bitch ain't shit, but you was never listening. I respect people that tell the truth and tell you how they feel. Some people like being lied to. Trump will tell you what he feel like. I have a conspiracy that YouTube gives fake subs and views the creators to scam advertisers. They might like 50%, 100 Listen, that's bullshit. YouTube hold back subscribers. Because first of all, you, you got to understand something, man. The crowd is the crowd. Everywhere I go, people know who I am. Everywhere. All the content creators now mixed into the industry and soul selling. Hell yeah. If you listen... To Aiden Ross and all of the rest. Yeah, they tell you. Yes. Some of these content creators are selling their soul. Yes. Yes. Why do you think I said what I said about Gillian Wallow? Entertainment keeps you distracted. Entertainment, being a content creator, an influencer, also shows them the power of who might be the next messiah in the black community. So everybody that hit the like, share, subscribe on Facebook, Instagram, all this shit was a test. And this shit wasn't the first time that the strategy has been used. There's nothing new up under the sun. All this shit been here before our time. Mark Zuckerberg didn't create no goddamn Facebook. Facebook was here in the beginning of time. Instagram was here from the beginning of time. It might have been called something different. These are the same Illuminati strategies that's been going on back to the Tower of Babel. People hate when I say this because then it takes away from their belief system. There's nothing new up under the sun. When you go to the pyramids and you look inside the pyramids, they show you nuclear bombs, right? And the writing on the walls in the pyramids is how old? Depending on what pyramid. So it's telling you that once upon a time, somebody in the past had nuclear bombs and they used them. They show you spaceships. Everything that we have now is on the walls. Somebody put that shit there to teach you so that you could open up your eyes. Now, if you're not paying attention to what's going on because you're entertained your whole life, next thing you know, you find yourself being 60 years old. Calling on the phone, like, yo, can I borrow $20? Because you ain't do nothing with yourself. You was entertained. Can you give me some more water, please? My cup right here. I'm thirsty. I don't 
don't believe my ass still alive knowing I got to get up the fast in the morning too. Most of the tribal civilizations mention con contact with extraterrestrial life. We are the extraterrestrials. That's what y'all fail to realize. We are. We can't. We keep limited in ourselves and our abilities. Let's pay attention to the laws, man. That's what you got to do. Pay attention to the laws. Pay attention to the weather. Pay attention to the weather. Pay attention to your circle. Pay attention to your community. There's something that they don't want you to see. You have to figure it out. This is your puzzle. This is your task to figure out what they don't want you to see while you're looking in the opposite direction. Solar eclipse is coming on April 8th. The military has been deployed all throughout the country for April 8th. Why? What are they preparing for that we don't know? That the military is being deployed all through America. That's something that we all have to figure out. I can't tell you why they're deploy, de deploying the military, but if the military is being deployed throughout this country, we got to ask ourselves a question. Is it going to be because we're going through World War III? Is it because we're preparing for a portal to be open? Will they use Project CERN to open up a portal? and blame it on a solar eclipse? I don't know. But you have to pay attention to the laws that's being passed or the pawns that's being moved on the chessboard. Don't get all the way distracted by Diddy because the reality of it is, who cares about Diddy? Diddy didn't try to save hip hop. He didn't try to save R&B. He ate off his off, off of the spoils of war. He got rich and got fat while we were starving. And his evil acts is catching up to him because he tried to outshine his master. You reap what you sow, my nigga. Looking into this situation, it looked like Diddy's sons is just as bad as he is. Not only might Diddy go down, but Diddy's sons might end up going down too with him. I hope that's not the case, but that's what it's looking like. Did the industry try to get me yet? Of course they tried to get me. Why do you think they sent WAC 100, Takashi 69, and academics? Of course they did. You see, academics sit down with me. Then he tried to replace me after we had the fallout. Me and Wack had the fallout. Then you see him try to replace me after some time. Well, who? Charleston White. Because the elite, whoever he's dealing with, already decided that it's a no-go with me. Because they know I'm not going to participate. Like they, I'm, I'm too much of a risk. You're playing with fire. You're playing with me. So who did they go get next? Charleston White. But when academics try to take Charleston White and go on a tour with Charleston White, Charleston White started disrespecting Math Hoffa's children. And he started also disrespecting the, the own Chinese community and the Jews. So certain people started making certain phone calls and Charleston White couldn't come to New York. So all of that shit crumbled. Then after some time, they let it die down with Charleston White and they sent Aiden Ross to go get him. So now Aiden Ross brought Charleston White through the door instead of 
academics. So now that Charleston White is dealing with Aiden, Aiden Voss, he's back to dealing with academics again because academic all, all of these content creators, they run together. That's just like you see Kai Sinnott, right? The nigga from the Bronx. What is he doing with Nicki Minaj and, 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 and Cardi B and them? Cardi B and Wilder and them together? Why? That shit is all together as one world. And me? It's but so many times I'm going to sit up here and say the things that I'm saying because like I said, now I got to start being selfish and think about my family. Because they showed me through my numbers tonight, we can let you get 7,000. We had 7,200 people in the building tonight. And they also showed us during this live, we could snatch people out of this live too. This is their way of talking to you without talking. Mm -hmm. This is why they say you sell your soul because nobody came and told me this, but they know I'm smart enough to read what they're doing. So the same way they broke my numbers down, look what they did the math. Math numbers is way better than that. Math numbers look nasty. For some reason, math is being punished too. Now they have the ability to turn the volume back up. If they turn the volume up on my channel, my videos is going to go out to millions of people. You might see 10 million people on this live watching. What they doing now? All these old rappers that ain't making money in the music industry no more? They moved over to what? Mace. You got Mace. You got um, Ken. They content creators. You got Gilly. You got Wallow. They content creators. I've been doing this shit before the niggas. But there's other YouTubers that was eating that didn't go through the door. They built, they following up. They built this platform up. Now all the streets is on the internet. We dealing with the cyber world now. I was just wondering the same thing. Kai Mr. Beast. Suffering brought you a gift, my brother. At the moment, it was supposed to be delivered. I was in prison 32 years solid. Damn. Wrongly, wrongfully corrected. Dow Jones, innocent man on the Google. This prison out here. Wow. Damn. Ooh. 32 years? Niggas don't even understand what kind of pain comes with that. To do 32 years in jail and come home with your sanity? That shit ain't no joke. Salute to you, fam, for real. I don't know, people, but um, it's one o'clock in the morning and we still got 5,500 people in the building. That's crazy. Oh, shit, I didn't even know my value was off. That's crazy. The question is, will Diddy get more time in jail than R. Kelly? Y'all still can't hear me? This don't, there's no sound? Okay, the sound came back in. 
Damn, I was getting ready to end the live, and now we got 6,100 people back in the building, huh? I know the haters are sitting up here looking. They waiting for me to say their name. Say my name, say my name, when no one is around you. Say, baby, I love you if you ain't playing games. <laughs> Keep talking that shit. We in here to listen, my brother. We here. Yeah, I know, but I definitely can't play it too close because I know I got to get up in the morning, make my smoothie, get ready to fast for the month of Ramadan, Throat probably going to be hurting because I'm sitting up here talking to the people while Diddy on the run. You know, it's, 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 it's sad, though. I'm not going to act like I'm happy to see what's going on with Diddy. I'm not going to act like I'm happy to see what's happening to him. I hate to see a man be destroyed like that, but you reap what you sow. And you can't accumulate that much evil in this world to think that you ain't going to reap what you sow. I spent 21 years of my life in a cage, bro. New York, Tennessee, I'm watching you stand on everything. Salute. Salute to all my brothers, man, that, that's coming home from the penitentiary and trying to live out the rest of what little bit of life that y'all have left. And understand, you know, we don't never stop being soldiers. We don't never stop being warriors. We always got to stay on our P's and Q's. I would never tell you that I'll never go back to jail. I don't want to go back to jail. But being a warrior and living on stolen land and being stolen property, there's always a war to fight. It's never over. It's just that we live in a state of confusion and we divide it as a people. But at some point in time, we're going to have to stand up and man up. Every man has to fight for something. Some of y'all brothers fought for y'all freedom and y'all made it back home. I salute y'all. Nice to have you back. You run this YouTube shit and that's a form of whoever computer programmer in Mind West. Thank you, family. Appreciate you. Shout out to all the haters in the building. Where y'all at, man? I know y'all watching me. They don't say nothing in the comments section. All the dirty section that I created, they ain't saying nothing. They just quiet, sit back, watching the numbers, analyzing. Like one day I'm going to be like Haas. <laughs> uh, it was only a matter of time before they caught up with Diddy. No, they wouldn't have did nothing to Diddy. If Diddy didn't sit up there and violate, he, he, he crossed the line. You can't play with them people they made you. They're not going to let you play with them. This is their world. you just a squirrel trying to get a nut. Yeah, I mean, as soon as I sat up there, said we got 6,000 people back in the building. They pull us down to 4,900. Y'all ain't shit. It is what it is, though. I'm playing myself. Maybe I'll go live again. I'm going to get myself together, make my prayer, and I'll think about going live again. I don't know. I'm out.